We're all saws. Wow. Dad's raw, mom's daw. Raw, <laughs> daw, and saw. Louis, and now Louis, Louis's law and Poppy's paw. What's up? I'm Ja. <laughs> yeah, ja. <laughs> Welcome to the family. We don't have a J. All right. We are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we have a very special, special, special guest, Mr. Sebo Walker is with us. How are you, dude? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, bro. <laughs> I'm good. What about? What's going on, man? We haven't seen you in so long since you moved. Yeah. How's uh how's life up in the North Pacific, whatever it's called? Pacific Northwest. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm already. I'm getting comments. Yeah. Like, oh, Chris is there horrible. It's yeah. horrible. <laughs> no, no how is good. it though? You yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, my wife and I are both from there, so made sense. Back home with the grandparents. Yeah, you started got a family. You got two kids. Yeah. That's the yeah. motivation of you moving back up there, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it was a mix of 2020, kind of early stage of the pandemic. We were going to visit family. Okay. And when we drove home, we found out that we were pregnant with uh, with Louis, our, our first While boy. you were driving? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, whoa. No, but when we... It Picked was up a couple tests. A couple of days. <laughs> yeah, a, a couple of days after we From got to Portland. Stop. And... Uh, and it was this super magical kind of surprise. Awesome. And uh, she took four tests. I have a photo. To make sure. Just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Three's pregnant, not enough, pregnant, honey. Pregnant, go pregnant. get another yeah. one. One more yeah, for yeah, good Go get another one. One yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it was, you know, it's like surprising, but, but real special. Yeah. And, uh, and we were ready for it. And um, I think we always had planned to go back to Portland when we started a family. You okay, know? okay. We had like a little over a decade here. Pretty much in Venice. And, yes. Uh, and it was kind of a cool time to start a new chapter. For sure. Know? For sure. I mean, you've yeah. been in Venice for a while. You came down here. What year did you would you uh, arrive in Venice? Because you came a couple times, right? You came with one of your friends, was doing a trip out here or something? I basically came down in like 2008 with a backpack to like pursue, like chase the dream. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then... That, you just how, flew down here, or did you like? No, I took a ride, like hitchhiked uh, my, all the way down here. No, no. <laughs> sounds well, like fear so, and loathing. Yeah, okay. I took a ride. <laughs> well, so get there. the timeline, <laughs> yeah, to, to kind of keep it straight. The first trip coming to California, or I guess the first the first trip that I came to California when I was like kind of sponsored mm -hmm. was after a Element trip. Um, Colin Provost. Shout out to Colin Provost and the Provost family because they, I had got hurt early on a element trip, like my first trip ever, and I was flow. Okay. And I, uh, like tried, I jumped down this, this big gap and bruised my heel, and was like, dusted the rest of the trip, which was so hard because I was flow and, you know, hungry and trying to kind of prove myself. Um, it was my first photo in the mag because I had landed the, it was like a switch ollie on a gap. It was but a tryout. So, it was a tryout. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, Brent Ashley was pro and on the team, and I think Levi mm. was on the trip, and then a couple European riders that um, were, like, transition skaters. But So that was the first, kind of my first, like, attempt after I'd gotten sponsored, like, flow by Element. Okay. Ryan DeWitt, rest in peace. Yes. Oh, he was yeah. the TM. And, and so they gave me a shot, and I, you know, kind of blew it and got hurt. And I was just kind of shy and nervous, and Brent Ashley is, like, kind of intimidating just because he's super good and mm -hmm. kind of cool and, and that was, well he was big back then like, that was, it was like a big name yeah yeah that yeah, was yeah. like after his elementality or yeah so this is the this your is flow actually, footage yeah and that was that last clip wow. shove, dude. that's a In rare DCs. one yeah always was a jumper you know but <laughs> so what happened after you hurt your heel? Was that it for Element? Or did you stay on flow for a little while longer? Well, you know, it obviously wasn't just like he got hurt, you know, cut him. Because everybody gets hurt. You know, sure. it was like a thing that happens. I just was so bummed because I was competitive, like, hungry kid that really wanted to be a pro skater, you know. So I was just right. like, of course. You know, I'd already landed the, that trick. 
I'd already done this switch ollie like over a gap and a drop. It was my first photo that ever got ran. And I think Price shot it. And I'm pretty sure it was in skate, the skateboard mag. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yanni Lat- Latisha. Lat- 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 Latiana, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was on the first. He was on the cover mm-hmm. of uh, okay. that mag. I remember just because that was like a special thing for me to get my first photo, obviously, in a mag. But, um, but yeah, it was kind of like I was gutted just sitting around the rest of the trip. You just re- hurt like a bruised heel, like a terrible bruise. But why heel. are you doing like, it no. again? Those, are, those linger too. Doing what again? Why are you doing it? I didn't shoot a photo. And we were trying to get photos for the article. So you got the photo. So I was like, You've already done the this. trick. Okay. Yeah. Oh, now I'm getting it. Okay. Yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, I mean, I, and I wanted to do it again just with them. Right. And, uh, and so, you know, it happens. But it was tough to, you know, it was like second or third day in. So That's horrible. It was like, mm. you get a chance and you're like, ah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but so call. I know, but you feel like you blew it, like you said. Yeah. You're like, I blew it, but yeah, it really, it really felt do? that way. Just because I wanted to just kill it, yeah. be super productive, you know, just uh, being the youngest of three boys, I was just like competitive, you know. <laughs> and um, Colin and I kind of became good friends, and so he just invited me to stay with him in Huntington and get like a taste of like. Cali life and Colin, skating. Colin Provost. Colin Provost. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, and so... And Wait, this is when so you, you and Colin Provost? Yeah. Okay. Like, tight buddies. Yeah. Mm. Odd couple. At that time, when he's little like... Little bit of odd couple. Right, but this is when Colin was, you know, 17. Okay. And I was 19. So he was still yeah. on the come up okay. as well. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, but okay. he was pretty... He was, like, well-established from mm. a younger age. Okay. Like, he was good at surfing good at skating he had a ramp in his backyard like he was kind of he was like tyler Bledsoe. similarly like at a young age it's you know easily visible that they're going to be something special right you know right and so it was really cool of him to kind of see i think he saw me go through that and and knew it was my first trip right and it's like come and stay and you can kind of get your heel better I'll show you Huntington, and he had a really cool family, you know, just like a, like a surf skate, inviting cool yeah, Huntington yeah. Beach family, like super mm. sweet mom and a couple brothers, and his dad was awesome. Nice. And so I stayed with them for a pretty long time. Um, this was your because first... basically I had the dream of becoming a pro skater, and he knew that. We talked about it. This is your yeah. first trip here. It was. I had taken a trip or two. Like my dad took me down to play in a, a ass game of skate. Um, How'd you do in San Jose? I got second. Ooh, yeah. really? Who'd you? Yeah. Who beat you? <laughs> Honestly, it was Diego. Diego but Naranja, he was like ten or something. Diego, yeah, I think it was Diego. Yeah, really? or Diego, or Diego the Butcher. <laughs> Diego Nahara. No, he, Ron? Diego Nahara. <laughs> The Diego the butcher. <laughs> He's probably good at flying. Does yeah. that mean orange? Yeah. Orange <laughs> it was down a 15 stair, and Diego the butcher. Diego the butcher got out. took you out. Damn. Back 180. That is no. Uh, Diego Duran. It was Diego Nahara, but that might have been a different one because I played I think three or four. I was really mm-hmm. I skated so much flat every day in the rain six hours in my garage. Oh what? man! Oh seriously, yeah. you were day. ready. Every trick. How often Pop is shove, a real front is it... shove, nollie flip, kick flip, switch flip, fakey flip? Every one eighty, every, and then get weird, go double, late. Yeah, three just, shoves. Just nerd, you know. <laughs> hey, what weather wise up there though? It really rains like every day. Like how often do you think? Like the yeah, like, all winter. All winter. Yeah. So like literally every day. Pretty much, yeah. You definitely get a couple days a month or you know give or take but it could also be two months where you don't get that's break. crazy i couldn't yeah. imagine that or there's a lot of days it rains it's dry it rains and dry yeah you know it's yeah. like that in seattle i remember too, right? a lot of times seattle's like that right yeah, yeah i remember a lot of times like it would be nice while i'm in school and then as soon as i get out it rains and i would just oh. be so bummed because yeah. i just was waiting to sounds to about skate, right. the worst <laughs> timing ever sounds about right yeah Did you indoor park where you grew up though wasn't there? Uh, what's the the skate shop? Was it Cal's, Cal's Farm? Pharmacy had department. The, that's what um, it was. Okay. Yeah. Once I was a little bit older, but when I started, there was like a YMCA where I met Tyler. Tyler was like six. <laughs> Tyler who? Skating a Bledsoe? half pipe. Bledsoe? Skating a, a, a big half pipe with a helmet on and doing like kickflips, fakie. 
You're like, and Damn. I remember being like, what? <laughs> you know, I was rollerblading um, when I saw him. Oh, wow. You yeah. weren't even skating No, yet. no, I didn't skate till I was 13. Wait, what made you transition from rollerblading to skateboarding? Just seeing Tyler doing the kickflip fakie or what? No, I had a couple... I had a couple friends. I mean, I just copied everything my brothers did. Oh, okay. Two older brothers, like, we're all a year apart, Sky and Shay. And, uh, you know, they were, we were all really active. And so, classic little brother, just try to do everything they do, try mm. to be better than them at it, try to beat them at it, you know? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel like, I, feel like, you, you know? I feel like you did beat them in skateboarding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely. Finally won. Yes. I was resilient. <laughs> didn't stop. Yeah. But we played tennis, soccer, basketball. And then the rollerblading or scootering or whatever was kind of like, a, you know, a fun fad yeah. at that time. We tried everything. So okay. we're doing. Was it a quick phase for them? That were they just doing it for a second and then they stopped? Or skating was yeah shorter for Sky, and Shay kept with it for a little bit, and then like around high school, you know, you just like transitional stage whatever totally. you get into. Yeah. yeah. And I, that was kind of my. I had liked soccer mostly wanted to be a pro soccer player so kind of similar mm. lane footwork mm. but um but then like around high school it got pretty serious you know and was more about winning and right. lose a little bit of the fun in it and that's around the time that i was getting into skating but um but i did it because they did it and then i got just so hooked you know yeah. i love the freedom of it and the kind of you're your own coach, so to speak. Because yeah. everything else I did was was you had a coach and you had like a a regimen and and a teacher or whatever. But skating was like the the freedom of it. Was, how'd, how'd you really, feel about how'd you feel about actually having a coach or anything like that? Because I know how I felt about it. it. Yeah, it was one of those things where again, like how skateboarding, just you have the freedom to just do what you want to do. Yeah. And then when someone's telling you like, no, get back in line, yeah. and fuck, you know. Do it yeah. again. You know what I mean? It's like, Put your yeah. uniform on. It hits a little different. Yeah, and you can have a good coach, you know, that can that can guide you and, and be like, just like a teacher, you totally. know, mm -hmm. can be a super positive thing. But I definitely just leaned towards, like, artistic things and skateboarding because there wasn't so much structure. Even in school, totally. it was similar in that sense. Mm -hmm. Like the regular subjects, math, science, history, I didn't really... I needed like a a more personal way of being taught. Sometimes I would stay after, like sp specifically for math or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I would feel like a little inadequate if I didn't get it when they would teach it. So I would maybe stay after. Like my, oh, I had a math okay. teacher, Mr. Warren, that would always teach me again after class, one on one, and then I would really get it. I just learned kind of differently. Okay. Had like a creative mind or yeah. had a harder time f focusing or paying attention sure, actually in sure. class, especially if I didn't really like it. Right. If I wasn't like psyched on it, yeah. it was harder. But I did good in school because um, I just would have had like skating taken away had I not had like a three three point okay. six GPA. Oh, so you oh, had nice. so you wanted to yeah prevail for just because of skateboarding in yeah. school. Yeah, but simultaneously it was sure. just like not into this. You know, <laughs> there's no there's not going to be a future here just because I'm not right. you know excited about it. But. uh but yeah, the coach thing, it was it was just interesting, the transition kind of from middle school to high school, mm -hmm. how sort of serious it felt. Like you had to put a lot of time in if you were in, you know, one of the organized sports. Yeah. Yeah. It was like every day practice. Oh, yeah. And that like would eat into the other time where I was starting to really get into skating. Like it's all I wanted to do. Like mm -hmm. I said, like yeah. six hours every day in the garage. Where did, what did your parents think about that, you stopping soccer? It was it was tough. Like my parents, Ron and Delight, shout out mom and dad. Um, they they were super supportive and and they could see you know my passion for it and and love for it. But this is two thousand four. Like skating was not as popular. Mm -hmm. It was not as exciting of a thing for your mom and dad to yeah. so be like my son is a skateboarder. Yeah. Um. It was more like you're gonna get into bad stuff, mm, you know. Yeah. Yep. The skate park had a certain smell to it. Uh huh. Pine cones. An organic smell. Like pine cones. <laughs> smell. Pine cones, I don't know what it is. Yeah, but, I think it's pine cones. Um, you know, and they would see that. But ironically, it was my, you know, kind of escape oh, from yeah. that stuff. 
I feel like instead I, of partying, I was at the park like late at night, mm. just skating flat. Yeah. So much skating flat, every trick possible. You know, you were training for the game of skate. I gotta get Diego. <laughs> Diego. Diego the butcher, man. Diego was really young when he beat me. Yeah, but yeah, it was. It really was something that that took me away from those things. Pause. Pause podcast. Okay. I need to tell you guys that this episode is brought to us by Athletic Greens. Ooh, we love Athletic Greens. We do. This is gold in a box, right? Love this stuff. <laughs> With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins and minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and Kelly's favorite thing in the whole world, aptogens. I love there aptogens. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Well, not only that. Ooh, tell me, Drone. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Nothing budget, only nothing, buttery, right? Nothing budget, please. Yeah, yeah. But it also supports better sleep quality and recovery as well. Tons of people take multivitamins, but mm. it's important that you choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. And it's also better when you, you know, uh, not to have a full medicine cabinet full of, you know, supplements. Oh, man. You know, wait, wait so I can get rid of all my supplements? Yeah, I was just over at Kelly's house the other day, opened the cup, I was hit with supplements. Get the trash can. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them in there. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is just visit athleticgreens.com slash nine club. That's N-I-N-E-C-L-U-B. Again, athleticgreens.com slash nine club. Take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance today there which is. is athletic greens <laughs> take over your health now how did you get yeah. into the s game of skate i uh, forgive me if I, I forget how how does that work again no we should backtrack yeah it, yeah, is, yeah. it is interesting it was one of the first competitive kind of things that i that i did and my dad drove me i think i maybe my brothers or one of them might have been Shay and I, but my, my dad drove us to San Jose for me to play in a game of skate. Anybody could enter? Yeah. Mm. I think so. I or is it a skate shop base? Or maybe you signed up. <clears throat> skate shop base? I feel like they used to do them at sure skate you would, shops. You would sign up there. You, you would sign up, I, it yeah. It wasn't like any qualification. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You could yeah, be like, I went from this skate randos, shop. You know? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. And then like down me. the line, they would have, like, if you won that, you would go to the next round. Yeah, exactly. And that's how you would get in there, yeah. Yeah. Kind of like Manny Mania. Oh, yeah. which, okay. which we'll get into. Oh, so you did a bunch a of stuff, a bunch of these games of skate. I did a San Jose, uh, and I did a Phoenix, Arizona, mm-hmm. and uh, and then maybe one here in Venice, like down the line. Mm. But the Phoenix, Arizona was like, I flew by myself. Mm. And then Arizona was nice. like really hot. You know, I hadn't experienced that kind of heat before. I walk out the room, like punch you in the face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's hot. How do people live here? But, and then I think I did, I can't remember how well i did in that i think i lost somewhere down the line but interesting because there's a lot of names that were in those that like have become pro skaters but we were all just like kind of little kids you know yeah yeah. (laughs) doing it right right and they would make the lane yeah and i was like an s kid you know okay i was like excel yeah yeah. s excels s like kind of everything scheme whatever the the thing was at the time gotcha i always manic mahdi I was just such a fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I've watched mm-hmm. Manic Mahdi like a million times, you know? And I love every person in it. Costin, Rodrigo, good Arto, up. Rick McCrack. I mean, it's all of them are so incredible. Maybe it was amazing. Tom Penny. Yeah. yeah. It still is just, I get like goosebumps watching it. Oh, you could pop it in and, and everything. 100%. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The intro. Oh, the my intro. God. Rodrigo, like, it's his crazy. intro where he's like, He's kind of just learned English, and he's like, it's crazy, like... It's crazy, like... You know, yeah. like, I love it. Used to watch it all the way through, VHS, yeah, yeah, yeah. or, you know. And then he, the, the, this part just takes off, and it just doesn't stop. You're like... You're just, it gets better and better and better. You're like, bro, slow down. He's one of the this best. This dude's gnarly. But that was like his... Not his first introduction to the world, but that was his he first was breakout. Big, yeah. It was his definitely first was big part. Because you'd seen him around in like four and ones, maybe, or something, but yeah. like... This dude's fucking good. Oh, dude. Yeah, and Ronnie yeah. Krieger. I mean, yeah. every part. Oh, yeah. And then Elusive, like Tom Penny. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Timeless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That video. Yeah. So how did the element thing, did the element come about because of the games of skate? No, I was, so around the time that I was feeling like 
I was good enough to attempt to get a sponsor. How did you determine that? Were you comparing yourself to what you saw in videos at that time? Or you just had a feeling or who was around you? Well, it kind of was because I got sponsored by Exit Real World, the local skate shop. Okay. Yeah, and my friend Brian Brown... My close friend Brian Brown, a different Brian Brown than you know. In the <laughs> I was gonna world. ask, like, what? But uh, <laughs> but a really talented skater, amazing switch flip. He was kind of like an older brother figure to me, and and um, he was just super talented. Okay. But him and I both kind of got on exit around the same time because uh, Jake Price, shout out to Jake Price, he was like a sponsored snowboarder and a filmer like okay. he's made a lot of really amazing snowboard videos like filmed and edited and he shoots only in film super talented mm-hmm. and he was a, a salem guy the the price family was kind of well known in, in salem where we grew up and he was the one that kind of gave brian brown and i a, a chance you mm-hmm. know he's like we can film and put you in the video and exit made a, a full length okay. every year basically mm-hmm. it was a skate and snowboard shop Jake and Missy were the owners, and, and they were just an awesome couple running a skate shop. You know, so cool. Really? Like, I remember getting Super airwalks at Exit at a wow. really young age. Yeah. The one with, like, the kind of, like, the stripe on it, you on, know? On the going down both yeah, yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, like, original one. Hmm. So just because you got sponsored by this skate shop, you thought, like, okay, um, let's go full blast. <laughs> yeah, and I was so... <laughs> let's go Baja determined. Blast right now. <laughs> I was skating so much, mm-hmm. and we were filming a lot, that after a video part or two, I, I don't know, I just... It's funny to think in hindsight, because I was just filming a video part every year as a pretty young kid. Yeah. This Dude, these were the Excels that had like a green world. neon cover and you could cut it and peel it and it had like a multicolored S design under it. Oh, wow, yeah. Is that like the weirdest, m- most unique shoe ever yeah. made? I remember it being <laughs> so exciting. Yeah, I Because I, I skated them and then I cut it at some point and like revealed this underneath design. <laughs> S, bring it back. Yeah. That was sick. I know some people there. The reveal. <laughs> Yeah, so this must this must have been around the time that, I mean, it's a funny thing to say, like, I felt like I was good enough to get sponsored, I guess, but I definitely just was, this. was like, curious and figured that's what you do. You make a video and you try. You have yeah. to try. So I would yeah. make a mini DV tape. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Do our viewers... No, what a mini DVD. Mm, some of them might. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up a photo. No. Yeah. But, you know, like that big, write my name and my phone number and my email maybe. I don't know. I just wrote like my info. Found the address of every company I could and sent it to them. You made copies of this little, on mini yeah. DV tapes. Yeah. That's weird that you put it on a DV tape. Why yeah, would well, VHS? Yeah. VHS? Or, or CD. I don't know. I don't know. I DVD think mean. I thought that was what you did. Right. And I that almost think that that's like that's harder guy. for the company because then they got to get the camera. They yeah. got to figure out how to. Yeah. Well, not all of them have an editing software at the place. Probably why I didn't get. Nobody <laughs> called you back. Sponsor in the beginning. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> it's like nobody's no, honestly, hitting me back. I feel like that was one of the ways to do it. Okay. And my my friend Pat Survey he. He had a VX2000 because he filmed the, the f- high school football games. And so he was like the filmer. He had a camera. None of us could really buy a camera at that time. He skated yeah. too. And he skated too and, and snowboarded and was like just an awesome, productive dude. You know, we, we, Pat and I were really good friends. And he was kind of the, the reason we all were able to make the video. <clears throat> like, I feel like they, the, that crew, Pat and some of the other guys were. Yeah, like too young to drive, but I had a car because I think I was 17. So I would drive us around and we would film. And it just is funny for me to, to kind of like go down memory lane because we were making full length videos every year, which just seems, well, you know, nowadays it's just Video less part every year, common right? and yeah. it's a lot of, it's a lot of work to make a full length, but we loved it. Yeah. Had a premiere every year, Okay, made it for the skate shop and 
I feel like crews do that, though. I mean, yeah. my crew, yeah. we made a full-length video. We didn't make one every year. We would just yeah. film all the time. Yeah. And then we would put together a video whenever yeah. the case may be. But so, Yeah, I think I just missed that. Every year, I missed, like, having a crew that yeah. you always make a video because that was, like, a good structure. You could have sure. kept that us, going, though. You, know? you could have. I mean, you found a new crew. You, I mean, the Crooked, there's yeah. your crew. You're making a video, you yeah. know? It just gets, it just gets amplified yeah. 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 over yeah, time. Yeah. It's right. not just the homies with the... You know. Mini DB tapes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Funny to think about. I never thought, is this not the right way? To well, you would, right. you I would, think it evolved. I, I did have a DVD at some point, but I just yeah. have in my shoe boxes at home mm-hmm. some of those mini wow. DB tapes. And I think it was one of my first attempts, you know, send it out, never hear yeah. anything back yeah. ever. I think it would be cheaper. Uh, except for Element at some point. I heard something back. Maybe. That's how you got on Element. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, got a call. Okay. Can you believe it? You know, I couldn't believe it. Can you believe it? it? Yeah. They call your house? Like, like I never... think it was a phone, a home phone with a area code at the time. Mm-hmm. Or no, without area code. Because there was a it was a transition where you had to put 503, our area oh, code. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. You right, added right, yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. I think I right. just had our home phone on it yeah who i recently came you? across it and was just like wow that's crazy who called you do you remember i think it was ryan dewitt I'm oh that's sure. what you said okay ryan dewitt yeah okay like we we would like to just send you some flow boxes and see where it goes okay. yeah and Which i mean you huge. even yeah, definitely huge huge but not right? only that but you made it into the van yeah that's that was like a little down the line but i'd kept you know i kept filming and sure making video parts and at, at that point, give a dog a bone. I was like, I'm flow. You know, it was huge. Yeah. And I also, through the skate shop, would get, I think S sent like two pairs. They would do like rep flow. Okay. Like okay. to a shop to hook up a rider of the shop. So you had your thing. little, you had your little sponsors and yeah. stuff. You were doing it. Yeah. For sure. I'm sure your parents were like, whoa, this is crazy. Like my son's getting yeah. a bunch of stuff for free. Yeah. It's always a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Always, always a good sign. And at the time, they were, they were, pretty cool enough to you know let me do it even though it was sort of looked at like you're going you know maybe with the wrong crowd or you'll get into bad stuff right doing I, this. I feel like after a time they kind of realize who you are as a person and yeah. what you're yeah. all about and stuff like that you know yeah. that kind of like eases their mind a little bit right. too i believe you right know? yeah but um, it was totally different back then it was, yeah. 100%. It was not a safe <laughs> thing to do for most people when you go, went on that element trip, what year was that? Do you remember? 2006. Okay, 2006. Yeah. So ish, yeah. ish. Because because later on you got on Stacks. Right. Was that your second sponsor after Element, or yeah. was that? So how did the Element thing actually end? Right. So I had. I think started getting Lakai flow. I had a Mag Minute come out, which was big. Ooh, those were big back then. A yeah. Mag Minute. Yeah. That was big. Um, and it was right around the time. So a guy named Gabe worked at Exit. Gabe. And he knew that I had these big dreams. And mm-hmm. I got I got accepted to U of O, um, you know, because I had a, a pretty good GPA. And I heard that U of O was kind of a party school. And my good friend Eric Neville, who I was hoping to room with, didn't end up getting accepted, or or we something was going to happen where we where we both kind of decided to take a different route. Okay. And um, and so I decided not to go to U of O because I was very much ready to stop school. You know, after high school, okay. you're like, all right, go. Like I just I hadn't found something I was really passionate about in academics to make me want to pursue college you know I just I wasn't I wasn't sure what the career path was and I just loved skating so much that I looked up to Andrew Reynolds Mark Appleyard and just wanted to be like them and uh and at that time this is like I have element shirts on and stuff and Mm -hmm. I think I'm skating Howard Selects oh okay that's like my favorite Lakai shoe okay Mm. that's the brown Howard Selects but this is element Sending Element me boards okay. and Lakai sending me flow shoe boxes. So what happened when this video dropped? It was, was it? it was like big. Okay. You know, pre 
internet being kind of what it yeah. is, but it was still bigger <clears throat> to have a, a mag minute come out. And, um, and, and so I was in Venice because Gabe offered me a ride. That's what I was saying. Gotcha. Yeah, Gabe at that Gabe time. Gabe from the skate Gabe shop. Gabe from Exit just was like, I'm going down to visit his sister or something. Mm-hmm. And was like, if you want to go. And it was kind of like a moment. Like, I got to take this chance. Yep. So literally packed a backpack, you know, and was just going to couch surf and try to figure it out, make connections, like see, see what can happen. Mm-hmm. And so my wife, Ellie, at the time, she lived here. Okay. Because she moved here. And I knew that. She worked at Exit. Were you? But I you was guys really weren't shy. together at this point. No, no. And I was super shy. And, okay. You know, maybe said hi to her, but okay. like she was like hot girl at the shop. I was just like, hey, I'll see you later. Yeah. You know. And, uh, she. Wait a minute. Your wife uh, now worked at the skate shop. At Exit. Moved down here, and that's how you slid in there. Well, she was <laughs> the only person I knew. Slid. Okay. Basically, so I was like, I don't know anybody else. That's, so I, I hit her look up. Look at this. What I was she this. doing? Yeah, what was she works. doing down here? She worked like for a cosmetic company right out of high school. Okay. Um, and it was just on Abikini oh. at the time. Yeah. So you hit her up and, had, and said, like, hey, I'm here. On, Ooh. on Palms and I, like second day visited them. And then they were all going home for Christmas break and they let me house it. So I stayed there for a little bit. And coming from Oregon and being a skate rat, Mm -hmm. Venice was just like a dream. Just Mm -hmm. couldn't believe the weather, just the way it feels, seeing the boardwalk. You know, Danny's at the time was in a shot in Dogtown and Z-Boys. He's like (laughs) tech decking in the food bowl or something. You know, everything was just, (laughs) oh, the the Nottis fire hydrant. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, I was just tripping on Venice in every way and and it's also in the park. unique and magical and all the artists and the boardwalk i mean you've never the, seen it you're yeah. like well it's an interesting place, place to yeah. say yeah. the least yeah and the park, the skater it's super exciting right the park wasn't there yet right no no, no. okay all right um, was this was the little park there yet or was it still graf- this wasn't even graffiti pit little this park was way was there. past that mm. little, park, little park post graffiti pits yes. yeah. yeah i wish i could have seen it uh oh that was back then glory just days, man. the footage you know but uh but there was rumors of the new skate park going in yeah. right as I came down. Okay. And met like Richard Massey and Blake and that whole crew that was kind of there every day. Blake Johnson, shout out. Blake. A Big lot of kids out. a lot of kids didn't even I saw make him it. two days ago. His? He's here. Oh, he's here? Yeah. Blake's here? No. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a great dude, man. Yeah. Is he still living in Barcelona? Yeah. I think yeah. he is, yeah. But I, th- I feel like a lot of those kids in Venice like didn't, you know, they didn't make it out of Venice almost. Blake right. did. He like took right. the took the bull by the horns yeah. and then went and did it, man. No, and that's even a, like that's a real thing. Even yeah. living in Venice, he he didn't have to move out of Venice to make it. He like right. still made it being here. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. You yeah. know? It's really it's really cool good to see. Yeah. Cuz it's kind of it's a vortex for sure, you know. Oh, it's yeah. just like a paradise party every day. You get and caught up in, get the, in, in so the, easy. Yes, like a lot of a good amount of friends have passed away that yeah. that um you know just you know maybe got stuck in True. it or or what have you. But um, but yeah, it's it's easy to kind of fall into that. And I I slowly was kind of when I was couch surfing, there was a period where I was being less productive, mm-hmm. even though I was couch surfing, just because it was easy to you know fall into that too when you were house sitting there they went home to oregon to their family you stayed you house sit they came back you already had a crush on this on this girl (laughs) yeah you were trying to when she had a way stronger crush on me really she liked you okay now when did you guys she wanted me to pursue her more and i Uh, wasn't oh she (laughs) she's telling you this because i was just like you know she's telling you this afterwards yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. like her and her girlfriends were like what is he doing you know he's not like steve just like hey i'm here like (laughs) i'm gonna go skate the park i'm gonna stay on the couch (laughs) yeah yeah okay so when did you guys actually then start dating now well same trip they yeah because they got back and i was just you know, trying to make connections, skating the park, sure. meeting people, and kind of just loving the beginning of mm-hmm. the Venice vibe. And this is, you know, 
13, 14 years ago, Venice was, I caught it in a really cool state. Right. It was, you know, just still had a, a lot of authenticity and there was little shops and yeah. it was, you know, artsy and a little less tech and expensive and what have you like it is now. Just well, the evolution and Nick just was there too. Who? Nick, Nicky's? Oh, Nicky's. Nicky's. Yeah. I just was talking about Nicky's the other day. <laughs> yeah. like, Magical, place. magical place to go. Yeah. It's sad. Well, just for an example of what you're saying, like Abbott Kinney was like known for like mom and pop shops. Like right. they wouldn't even allow any big brand to come in there. Right. Which it eventually happened. They started having the Adidas store and yeah. all these kind of, you know, corporate corporate shops kind of started yeah. moving in. You know, yeah. so it, it did lose its luster a little bit. Inevitable change. Yeah, yeah like Abbott's habit was yeah. that sure. coffee shop and yep. everybody oh, knew yeah. each other. I would yep. paint there in the morning. And, it's like cheers, and man. Everybody it lasted a, a while, but then, yeah, it was like a $2 coffee and mm. the lady knows you and you right. talk. You know, you yeah, love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's it's like so different, kind of transactional Seven fifty for the coffee, you know. Whoo! <laughs> doubled <laughs> almost. What's the other spot? Depending on your milk. Oh, what's on the other spot in Abikini that's like super high end, like coffee shop? Blue bottle. Blue bottle. No, there's the other one that. Oh, all, intelligence. It, yeah. yeah, that place. Oh. That's like twelve bucks for like a coffee or something. Nuts, yeah, dude. we're in the wrong business. Yeah. Man. <laughs> really? I mean, we going to. And they give you attitude when you ring bucks. them up. It's just one of those places everyone goes there to work, and it's just like yeah, it's yeah. just like a. Th- place and they you're, vibe you yeah yeah like, you're like all right yeah, cool dude. vibes Just like a, a coffee I'm it's not. like a skate shop you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. vibes and then coffee yeah, <laughs> yeah should, no, that's easy we could do that it's a trip to see just the the change but that said i i feel lucky to have experienced it and mm. our friend macy worked at mollusk at the time macy price who okay. was jake price's sister who was kind of like the first person to to kind of give us a chance to film mm. and he actually made my first sponsor me video I wish we could find it. It's really funny. I mean, I have a pretty like Which one? high, unique pitched voice, you know. <laughs> but back then, it was off the charts. Like, what were you like talking about? Back side flips and not front side flips. What you told like what tricks you like to do or something like that? That was that was an exit commercial just oh. to, to say how <laughs> funny my voice Wait, was at the time. Is this it? Time, is but this it? 2010. No, or even before this. Yeah. Wait, I want to see well, what the, the actual sponsor me tape was. Ooh. You know, my name's Sibo Walker. I'm it's like doing a four in one profile thing. Years old. Yeah. I'm staying and in Venice yeah, with this girl. I don't even know. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was way before, it was way before that. Okay, mm. but I, I had that problem that too when I, was, when I was little. Though I had a little ass voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> little yeah. Real ass voice. <laughs> little ass voice. Or you know. Yeah. Hey, hey guys. Yeah. 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 I still get it. Like hello, and they're like, oh hey ma'am, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a dude. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Sibo Walker. <laughs> is Sibo short? For for Sebastian? Yeah. Okay. Just like yep. letting people know that. Yes, yeah, you both just stuck. Yeah. I can see that. I can see easy. Oh, and all the brothers have an S name. Yep. Oh, okay. that's And an A the... initial. Okay. A. Oh, A S A. Middle. Middle name. W. Saw. Saw. We're all Saw. Wow. <laughs> Dad's Raw. Mom's Daw. Raw. Daw. And saw. Lu- and now Louis, Louis Law and Poppy's Pa. What's up? I'm Ja. <laughs> yeah, ja. <laughs> Welcome to the family. We don't have a J. Dude, okay. Okay. We kept the tradition going with our kids. Did yeah. you? Yeah. Louis Arthur Walker, cool. Poppy August Walker. I love it's it. It's kind of fun. Man. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Louis Arthur Ra- what? Louis Arthur Walker. Louis. Is his name Louis or Louis? Louis. Just spelled oh. like French. And the other one? Poppy August Walker. Wait a minute. Spell French. What do you mean? Well, it's spelled L O U I S, which ah, I think is the French. It's Louis. Yeah, it looks like it. People are going Louis. to say <laughs> Louis Vuitton. You're, you're in the. Se- hey. But but it, hey, there we go. when roll call comes in school, they're going to say Louis Walker. Yeah, it makes you tough. My yeah. they, they okay. fudged okay. up my name okay. Okay. every yeah. every day in school. They got my name wrong, so so it sucked at the time. But then you stand out. What do you mean? You say it's Sebastian? You have to, they know, know it's Sebo? No, he said Sebo, Zebo. Oh. Yeah. Sebastian what? Mm. Sebastian Alvin Walker. In skating, you know, sometimes the nicknames tell. It was just a strong tell. nickname. Right, right. I, w- I remember thinking, when am I going to change to my real name? Oh, like you, had those, you had those thoughts. Or, well, I just wasn't sure because I have a strong nickname. Everybody knows me by Sebo. Right. But... Is there a structure to it, or is you know, there, I always thought, huh? Right. When do I Sebast- go? To Next week, Sebastian? I'm gonna change this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At what point? I gotta start. Stop. Correct. I mean, Sebastian's a pretty strong name too, though. It is. Yeah. In a lot of ways, I'm like bummed to not 
go by Sebastian or just uh, I don't know when I tell people it's my real name they're like oh I love that name yeah yeah and it is a it's a great strong name I just mm. you always know, was by went by let's change it now uh, this, is the, this is where you do, this is the moment everybody after the moment. I filmed a nine club <laughs> yeah it is Sebastian it from time. here on out Mark Gonzalez take note everybody over at, everywhere change my hair and <laughs> change where, hey, where did, start skating regular for being the name Richard where did Dick come into place. That's a, <laughs> that's fantastic. That's question. a whole other episode, man. <laughs> we need to we need to talk about this with the, like, with the, I, with I the, get Sebo, like Sebastian Sebo, but Richard, you're like Dick. Yeah, how you're how like, does that work? Like when you turn like 25, we're like I'm gonna go by Dick now. We're like, yeah, that right. is a funny one. Yeah, weird. I don't know. Just something. I've, just I've, asking. I've questioned that as well. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks, thanks for the quandary. Do some <laughs> thanks for the quandary. <laughs> so wait, did we did we find out how what happened to Element? Right. Um, so I had been down here for maybe around two years, maybe close to, to around two years, couch surfing. Okay. Met a lot of people, stayed a lot of places mm -hmm. and, and I was able to be somewhat productive and met Raj, shout out to Roger, just kind of looking out for me. I, and I met Jason Rogers and mm -hmm. met a lot of people that, that looked out for me and kind of helped me wiggle my way into shooting photos or filming with people because that's what I really needed to do. But when you're unknown, that's hard, you know, to be For like, sure. Atibo, do you want to shoot a photo? They're like, who are you? Right. <laughs> and that's, yeah. not a, that's not a dick thing to say. It's just no. how it is. Yeah. Their yeah. time is better spent yeah. with... Yeah, like... A photo is going to get run in the also, bag. Also, if, if they it's work somebody for somebody that is yeah. like on, yeah, and so and if Roger's like working for audio, he needs to go. You know, he's yeah. working with audio people. Yeah, yeah. And but if he, you're on, if you're on the sesh though, then obviously yeah. he'll yes, yeah. yeah. And he kind of brought me on the sesh here and there, and Red. and we'll get to that because at some point I I kind of like skated Crayle Tap, and this was a big um, like elevation for, for me in my career. So we'll mm, touch on that, sure, like with Raj yeah, and Crail Tap, but to backtrack a little, um, I was in Santa Barbara visiting my brother, okay. he's a chemical engineer and he was in grad school. And because I was couch surfing, I would visit him here and there just to like reset, you know, cause he helped me out too. He would, he would send me like little chunks of change here and there oh. to get subway. Okay. <laughs> Rest nice. in peace. That's where Great White is, but oh yeah, oh, that's so long that was. I hit that place a bunch dinner, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Five bucks for the that goes a long way. Day, five dollar you know? foot longs, man. I miss those things. Yeah, five dollars. Five dollars. I ran those. Three yeah. cookies for a buck fifty, I think, if you're feeling lucky. But, that was a cool cut combo. Was it wasn't wait, it wasn't three for ninety nine cent. <laughs> it was maybe. It, it might. It was. It was three for a dollar. Yeah, three for a dollar. Unheard of deal nowadays. Cold cut combo. I get a cold cut combo, three cookies, and a. Drink, yeah. bag of chips too. Ooh, those are good. Right. Yeah, there's that like, turned into a meatball start sending guy. You stuff after this episode. You get meatball sandwiches. I love. I, I was. I did too. Oh, dude. Uh, that's beast. Cold cut combo, and yeah. then I went to meatballs. You put the, you haven't put lettuce, onions. We should all say our Subway sandwich order. Well, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it so Lettuce, long. onions. You got the meatball? Yes. Listen to this. Us. No, listen to this. <laughs> lettuce, heck? onions. Mustard mayonnaise. On a yes, hundred percent, hundred percent, and parmesan cheese to top it off. Parmesan cheese, okay. Oh, oh, the mustard rest, mayonnaise. Oh my god, it. It, it accentuates the flavor, man. Wow. Of the Tenfold. meatballs, everything. <laughs> Tenfold. Let's go. Did you oh, so go ahead, Sebo? What's yeah. yours? You were laughing at mine. What's yours? I had also a, a unique sauce combo, so okay. I feel you on that. Okay. I'm not judging you. Uh, I don't know. I feel a little, little judged fun. right there. By me? I did. I did. These <laughs> two, definitely. <laughs> they are like yeah. not down. Yeah. I'm like, nah, I'll probably try it. I'll try any combo. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I used to get, I would get a veggie, ah. which is like not exciting, but I was, mm -hmm. I was always that kid that liked salads and ate tomatoes like apples, you know? Oh, wow. Ahead of the curve, but um, trending now. But it I really would get is. a veggie and I would get ranch and sweet onion. Mm. Oh, that's and that set it off right there. My shout out to Kyle Hand and my good friend. He he worked and skated for Exit. And anyway, I, at some point he let me try his sandwich and it had that on it. And I was like, 
boom, what is going on with this thing? First of all, and then I was it? just hooked, you know? First of all, combo just like this. who is letting somebody else take a bite of their Subway sandwich? <laughs> that is what I want to know. That's, That's what I want to know. I don't know. That you is just a weird, Dubs, I'm sorry, I love you, bro, but you are not having dude, a bite of my Subway little sandwich. Little nope, bite. Nope. These guys don't want a bite of yours, dude. I They're don't want them to have a bite of my sandwich They're either. They're so sketched out by yours, meatball, dude. That is kind of crazy to ask someone or to offer someone. Kelly, that looks good, man. Let me ask a bite of that. No. It's not happening. He was older and he okay. always looked out for me, you know. Hey, no, good a, stuff. That good kid stuff. that everybody that's I just think homie, it's dude. I just that's think it's homie. I just think it's weird. That's, that's all. Homie, I don't dude. care. It's not like he was drinking his milk. He's, I mean, that'd be a whole other thing. That's that's the that's definitely a whole other thing. Well, you found your sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a salad with bread, basically. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But that said, yeah. I love that we touched on Subway. But <laughs> And I don't, I'm not sure how I got there, but uh, oh, I bring it back, yeah, back ahead. to the, the tree root. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I was in Santa Barbara, and um, my brother Shay, he looked out for me a lot. Or if I would get hurt, I would go recover with him, and um, just because it's close, sure. closer than Oregon. And I got a call from DeWitt saying they'll still send me boards, but they don't see the, the future. Okay. You know, just an honest. Um, That's cool from letting bad go. It's like... Hey, it, nothing. Yeah. We don't see any happening just for your sake. Like right. maybe go try to look for yeah. something else. Yeah. I respect that. It's yeah. a yeah. it's a yeah. bad call, but it's it's a good call at the same time. Yeah, yeah. and There's, I think, I think, whatever it was that you know was this decision that he saw fit, and there was Nick Garcia was flow, and mm. there was quite a few other like really sick flow riders, and okay. I think it was a time to choose for them. Mm. And so it was nice in the sense that he was honest just so Ex I could pivot exactly. however I wanted. Exactly. And at the time, that was kind of the only thing. So I was pretty quick to be in the mind space of I'll go back to school because that was always the, the backup. Oh. I'll, I'll go back and, and finish school because I always had a pretty strong feeling that I should do school. And my parents really encouraged it, you know, just the kind of classic route. Okay. But specifically right out of high school was like, I got to try this. I feel like that's a weird choice, though, with the 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 dedication and the, uh, you know, you wanting it so bad. Right. Yeah. I'm saying that's where my mind went because it was the one thing I had pretty much. And it was kind of like a board sponsor right. is pretty is pretty crucial. Yeah, it's huge. But to kind of uh, clarify, mm -hmm. I also just had really been struggling. I was yeah. couch surfing. I wasn't comfortably in an apartment. I wasn't, I didn't choose to work because I was with, trying to give everything. What happened with your girlfriend, dude? Well, she <laughs> could have bunked up with was, her. Yeah, and I did. I stayed okay. with her and her okay. roommates and they like moved around. But you also just had this kind of overwhelming feeling of guilt when you're couch surfing you're just always needing something from yeah. somebody you don't and it, it wears welcome. on you you know two yeah. years is a oh, long yeah. time oh two years mm. i couch surfed wow, okay. like with a backpack so mm. relatively homeless okay i think we should say right subway diet but you're still doing your thing <laughs> not though. eating you're still doing your thing you're following the sleeping real crazy like on the, the wood floor you know not not sleeping great yeah and um, and so at that point in time, that was just the initial thought because it was kind of like okay. popping the balloon. Yeah, like man, that was that was my path almost, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it was a difficult pivot, but really interesting timing. There, there was a guy named Kevin who worked for Built to Shred, mm -hmm. and Kevin Oriuchi. I'm not positive his last name, but it was mm -hmm. Kevin from... Probably, yeah, yeah. Kevin Oriucci. That's good that you know that. Because um, shout out to Kevin. He basically connected me with Reese Forbes and Michael Leon mm. at the time. And they like were fans of my skating. And this is like two days after that call. It's a weird how Ryan stuff Durant, like that happens. Where it was this so amazing... Weird, yeah. You know, we were we like your skating, and and Michael Leon I think had left Crail Tap a little bit before that, mm -hmm. and started. He'd had stacks for a bit. I feel like side project. Yeah, for when sure. When he was at mm -hmm. yeah, girl and chocolate. It's been around for a while, I think. Yeah. Commonwealth Stacks. 
It was, yeah. a, was, a, was a full name like of it. Like his side thing, because he's an amazing, yeah. talented artist. Right. And so, unbelievable timing for me. And I told Ellie, because around that time, Ellie came back to Portland. Ellie was My your wife, wife now. Yeah. You're now wife. She okay. came back to Portland, um, I think, kind of just to for like a reset and was going to go to to school up there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it was it was amazing to call her and I didn't have internet at at the time or access to a computer and so I told her what it was. I hadn't seen anything. I didn't know anything about it. But of course, Reese Forbes. I'm like, "Whoa." Stamp of and, approval right yeah, there. Yeah. And anyone that is interested, mm -hmm. um you may you not know, have heard of Michael Leone, grateful. right? But like yeah. Reese Forbes, yeah. yeah, let's let's go. Right, and so Ellie looks at the website and like, this is awesome. These graphics are so cool. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we have some here, the yeah. butterfly graphic. And I was always a big fan of Rasa Libre. Okay, I bought uh, Rasa Libres, gotcha. and that was Michael Leone's art. Yeah, ladybugs and like really cool, you know, art on decks. I didn't even realize that was him. I yeah, he was that. there. That's awesome. Yeah, with like Matt Field mm -hmm. and, and Nate Jones. Mm -hmm. He was like a part of that art direction, I think, at, at Deluxe, and um, and so she looked at the boards and is like, "This is so cool!" Really excited, you know. And I met. I remember driving the van. Um, to like Silver Lake. I didn't leave the West Side a lot, so it was just seeing that almost for the first time. This probably. was, you are in a van at this point. Yeah. Okay, we'll go back, but go ahead, please yeah. continue. Yeah, you that drove was, to Silver Lake? Right, that was really close to the time that the that transition okay. happened. Okay, okay. Um, which all sort of collide in this big reason why I was able to start to skate better sleep yeah. better okay. do better and be more productive because that was a big you know uplifting <coughs> moment for me to get like a new sponsor after being dropped and almost sure not necessarily giving up but i plan B. like i said was couch surfing and really kind of roughing it yeah. so if i don't have something i'm holding on to and yeah. two years was a long time it wasn't a couple months right like i've been really pushing it and kind of you know it was it was not going to happen so I met Reese Forbes and Michael Leon at like a coffee shop. Huge fan of Reese Forbes. Mm -hmm. So just kind of like a trip to see him and to be their first am. And paid a little bit of money, which was amazing as their first am. And then... How much were you getting? A couple 200, 200 bucks? Was that your first paycheck? 250 bucks a month. Was that your first paycheck for, getting skate, for, yeah. for skateboard? Damn, dude. For an am, that's pretty good. For sure. Just couch surfing, doing so your thing. So many subway sandwiches. Hey, How I bet you budgeted out. 250 bucks, I mean. Two, two, five nine. times 250 <laughs> divided by, get, I mean. You get a lot. You get a lot. <laughs> That's easy math, I told you. Do you get I'm extra sauce? Do you get uh, cookies? Well, we'll, no, we'll no, just, no. Well, okay, so okay, okay. Simple. Just stay, okay. Yeah. This is your intro video to the yeah. team. There's and they were trying to build a team. It's not like they had yeah. like a big thing following or like they were slowly ramping it up a little bit like yeah. you said like michael leon left girl like he right. was gonna focus on this full time i, exactly. I, I, I would assume audubon audubon oh yeah the balance brace alone too i see oh yeah oh yeah we, we were, were just talking, talking about, about that, that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, i'm dude. even walking i'm gonna do some manuals so oh, look at that hair that's all Ooh. oh my god oh, that's when you had the little Goatee okay. thing. Yeah, oh, you, had which, a whole, which, you had a whole new, you had a whole different look right there, bro. We're gonna like, we'll, we'll touch on the goatee. That's gonna be actually funny. <laughs> yeah. And that hair. Oof. Oh yeah, you had the the long ass hair and the goatee. Look at Sibo with the goatee and the beanie and the long hair and the balance yeah. bracelet. Yeah, the balance Go ahead. bracelet, bro. Power balance. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, we got to look back on your old self and get a little me. cringy, right? Oh my god, it happens to the best no, of us. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> we look back on ourselves all the I think time it's here. Funny, bro. I'm like, what is going on yeah. here? Where was the voice of reason? No, no, we need a life it coach. Didn't, it didn't exist. So cool, we're reinvigorated. We got stacks on your side. You're getting high yeah. flow, right? Yeah, like everything's kind of panning out a little bit. Right. Yeah. Aside from the the self-care that needed to be handled with oh, that goatee and that hair. By the, way, <laughs> by the way, at this point in time, you said you were living in the van? Yeah. So like around the time that I get on stacks and I'm super excited making a little bit of money was around the same time that 
my mom and dad were kind of wanting me to have a little more security. Because sometimes I, you know, wouldn't know I was going to stay at like 11 o'clock at night and just have to mm. reach back out to somebody that I was hoping not to because I'd stayed there a couple sure. times. Oh. So I've stayed probably in more places in Venice than anybody maybe. You know, yeah. I just, it's like, oh, you live there? Oh, you got a good right. layout people, on that. You know, <laughs> met so many cool people. Shout out to everybody in Venice that, you know, was kind and, and would let me stay. But it had a very kind of welcoming aura to it. Just you yeah. meet people. Skateboarders, They're like, come bro. over, let's yeah. hang out. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're having a little party. Yeah. Um, come stay with then me. he pretends no he's problem. passed out on the couch. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I open. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope they're not yeah. looking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oops, I this, this is a nice couch. I'm just there. Can I do laundry? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, like, you got to brush your teeth. Yeah, I tried yeah, to be yeah. a good guest and clean, you know, and I kept like organized and, and whatnot. But like I said, it really wears on you. Yeah. Uh, also changes your perspective. Like perspective wise, I appreciate it. it the simple things in life so much yeah. when I would go home. I could imagine Couldn't believe too, I had a house, yeah. a room, a pantry with food. I was just felt so lucky. I almost feel I didn't like have it, you know. Right, and that, right. in hindsight, that's a really cool thing to feel. I almost feel sure. like too it plays on your mind. Like, is this where my life's at right yeah. now? Yeah. I'm just going from couch Heavy. to couch. I'm pretending I'm drunk to stay on a couch. Now you didn't do that, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like Heavy. this it's this thing, man. Yeah. It's like it's damn. Really heavy. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I'm trying to go after my dream and like I'm just being blocked yeah, by like every a way, angle, it definitely you know? can weigh on you for sure. Bro. Definitely. Were you tripping so, on all that stuff yeah. back then? Like how, like mentally, like you know, like we had to. Have, yeah, right? like, I was very aware of it. Yeah, um, for sure. But it was combated by. I really think it's possible, mm -hmm. and I really the, feel yeah, so sure that I can make it happen. Did your and, parents uh, buy you the van? So they got it for free from their friends. It was like an old. <laughs> ladies van you know Amazing. oh so you yeah. went you went up to oregon grabbed yep. the van drove it back you're like yep. <laughs> thanks i'm <laughs> out i got a place we to took stay the seats out and put the mattress it fit oh perfect. so even your parents everything you had planned this out from the very beginning you yeah. they, they said we got you this van you can they, live just in case oh it was here's a, initially here's a backup yeah, yeah. <laughs> little did they know it's become your home right that's the fallback oh it worked yeah comfy bed it was safety yeah and I had curtains that I put up on the windows just so nobody could see that I'm yeah, in there. Dude, that's I, the thing. All what? I did was sleep, jump in, curtains up, sleep. What year out. is when this? the sun comes up, I'd wake up. It's like 80 degrees. Like the sun just roasting the it's van. It's like I need a fan oh. or something. Ace Ventra yeah. coming out of the hippopotamus or whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's so Not hot. Naked, come out. <laughs> Will yeah. Ferrell, it was hot in yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it would cook, yeah. But then I would jump out like start the day early but it, it was a huge transition yeah for but me even nowadays like safety. people people do this nowadays they yeah. it's the van life right like you were way ahead of the curve on this right. i suggest doing it out here in like a beach area versus doing it anywhere else like <laughs> in the valley or inward mm -hmm. in the empire like it, you it probably wouldn't have worked it that long yeah. Yeah. yeah at least you have the breeze out here yeah it was 100%. a good place to, to live in a van honestly but I was really low key, and it was just to get a good night's sleep mm -hmm. and to not worry about those Look, things because that alleviated. Right here. Yeah, this is a Jenkins miracle. Had just by a, the like way. a little side it, area for t-shirts and pants, and you know is. I didn't super set it up. You know, people now really outfit it oh yeah which is cool yeah, i look at them sure. i'm like whoa look at that setup is sick well you yeah. joined a gym you went yeah. to, so you could go in there take a shower Shower, brush your teeth like kind of right you were working out as well right trying to stay a little fit right there yeah so you can't it was just go valley in and total use, fitness can you just go in and valley. use 19 dollars a month there you go wow you were getting 250 so there you go <laughs> <laughs> I perfect. cut, cut yeah. into my subway diet a little <laughs> yeah. bit <laughs> But it, no, but I could shower, brush my teeth. They had a cold plunge. Okay. Wow. Like, so you back I, then. I've been doing for so long, but also it's just ironically like so popular and trendy right now. Yeah. But <laughs> um, you were doing it. You were having the curve on a it lot of stuff. Well, down. the funny thing is, you pioneered this whole. Well, this movement. is funny too because my my friend Brian Martin and I, he was a member there too, and he skated stoner, and so we would like randomly see each other there. But one night, we went a little bit drunk to the gym, which is like funny and ironic to go mm -hmm. drunk to the gym. <laughs> but like, so you both about to get kicked out of Bally's yeah. right now. We both had been nervous to go in the cold it because we would see all the kind of 
elderly people going in. Mm -hmm. And then we put our toes and be like, ah, you know, we would go in the hot tub or the sauna. But always was curious. What does it feel like? Okay. And is you know didn't really know it's super good for you necessarily, but came to kind of find out you know if I was jumping down something, it was really good for my body to sure. go in the cold and and I was jumping a lot, so that night when we're like a little saucy, we're both like we got to do it because I would always sit in the hot tub and like look over and be like mm, I should just try it, just jump in you know so you could jump right back like, in the hot tub you're not gonna die it's yeah. fine yeah. you know I like, hype myself up. <laughs> yeah. Because you put your toes, like I said, it's, like, it's freezing. Oh, I'm not I would have thought that it was broken, like another jacuzzi yeah. that was just broken. Yeah, this yeah. is not hot over yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> I've been coming here for How weeks. It's still it broken. <laughs> yeah, but so we jumped in that night and kind of addicting. Yeah, you know, <gasps> lose your breath, kind of oh crazy like mm-hmm. feeling, you know. But then started doing it. Start hot, it. cold, hot, cold, all the time. Especially good. if I was jumping. Sure. Wouldn't Amazing. feel sore at all the next day. And oh, I was skating wow. like Santa Monica triple set, jumping yeah. big stuff No, you were skating, lot. bro. Yeah. You were you were Hooking. doing it. You were doing it. Without, I mean, knowing, I, without knowing the health benefits, you, I mean, it seemed like, you know, obviously it's, it's working. Yeah. You were just going off of how it felt, yeah. right? And how you felt after It was crazy yeah. how beneficial it was. Let me ask you a question. You're living in the van. How long did you live in the van for in, in, in L.A.? I lived in the van for four years. <laughs> okay, that's a long time. That is. At any point in time, are you like, just like with the other thing, like are you, are you like thinking about what the hell you're doing? You're living in a van. Did you ever have thoughts of like, dude, this is just, what am I? Down by the river? What am I? Yeah, you van. probably heard that so many times. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. in a van down by the river, recipes Chris Farley, yeah. but. There must have been hard times when you're like, dude. Yeah. I, I got to go to Bally's to take a shower. I got to go do this. Like, I got to hang my clothes up at Stoner Park after yeah. I wash them to dry. Like, right. Yeah. I think for me, the earlier part, it was almost harder, like couch surfing and mm. really not feeling like I was kind of putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Okay. And there was one specific moment where my wife kind of called me out in like a, I love you, but you're not doing enough type of way. You were seeing her at this to point hear. in time yeah. too. She yeah. was still up in Oregon or down here? This was, around, this was around the time that she was here. Okay. Yeah. You wouldn't stay with her? I stayed with her. Okay. Yeah, off and on. Okay. But I also didn't want to like push it. Mm. You know, because she would have roommates or, you know. She, okay. Yeah. So I was, yeah. I was, totally, I was, totally understandable. I always tried to tread yeah. lightly, you know, just because I felt intense guilt no matter what. what like, was I'm always her, asking right. for something. What was her loving call out? It was kind of just almost in the lane of, I, you know, I think you could be doing more to pursue this. Okay. Yeah. Not like I was lost Blowing in the it. sauce okay. or anything. Mm-hmm. Just could kind of work harder to make those connections. Um, and I think that's. Around like the time all of this is happening in terms of stacks and the transition to the van. Because the transition to the van was huge for me. I started sleeping better mm-hmm. and I just didn't have like as many worries. Okay. And so there was a lot of moments where I, it was easy for me to, to kind of feel a little odd about living in the van and doing what I'm doing. Yeah. But I was making you know, enough moves that it was all working in the right direction. Like getting photos and mags, and mm. that's kind of when I go to Crail Tap with Roger mm. and skate the girl park. And Rick and Mike um, like show interest, like they really w- want to put me on, but they wanted me to shave my goatee. <laughs> What do you mean? Uh, wow. Just to clean up. It was kind of scuzzy. Like, okay. I totally get it. Yeah. It was the first facial hair I could grow at the time. You so were holding on like, to that cool. for dear yeah. life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, of course. I should but were not they, have a goatee. Was it, were they just yeah, joking? How do they, how do they <laughs> tell you? Yeah. How do they go about that? Yeah. yeah. Was this just like, hey, dude, you should I, trim Jason that Rogers thing. Jason Rogers told me. Jason Rogers told me, maybe just like word to the wise, 
it would be a better look to kind of so they clean didn't up. physically they, they, they didn't physically come and be like yo dude no <laughs> your beard is no, weird no. you need yeah. to shave that thing no right. no that was jason i think rogers Rick and Mike, yeah jason rogers put that in your head and he would say it like yeah. that too he's like dude you gotta oh, cut jason the would proudly, <laughs> jason rogers <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. J- jason would proudly say yeah I told you want to get on autobahn shave the, shave the beard <laughs> he probably just put it like rick and mike's not gonna sponsor you no that's what he said yeah we gotta go get that bro well at any rate it helped. I cleaned up. Okay. And uh, were you even aware of that? Like, did you, what were you, were you surprised almost? I'm saying that. No, no. I was so like blown away, excited to to have a chance to be like, on oh, look, yeah, look like, That's all. Okay, I'll say this. Yeah, tonight. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. I didn't even. Why do I even got this thing? Going? <laughs> Just finally could get facial hair and kept it. I love that. But yeah, it's kind of a, a funny anecdote. But. Big picture, sure. I'm gonna kind of have a chance on Lakai, right? And I'm am for stacks, so things are really feeling solid. I'm living in the van, yeah. I'm filming a lot, mm-hmm. you know. So there wasn't a lot of guilt as much because I felt like I was really making good decisions and being productive. Sure. Were right. you were you always staying by Stoner? Is that normally where you would stay with the van? Yeah. Would That's you ever go strongly where I would stay? Same. Yeah, I just knew the neighborhood and it was safe and mm-hmm. the gym was there and I would paint in the morning at a coffee shop. It's all about comfort. That's where you feel yeah. comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Was there any weird experiences like people trying to break into your van while you were in there or getting a ticket while you were so in there? So like, surprising. Nothing. Nothing. Really Four years, weird. nothing yeah. weird. so low key. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You have to get the van fixed at all? Yeah. Yeah, quite a few times. It had like... 300,000 miles on it. Oh, geez. And it was a 94. It's more than Chrysler, a quarter. It's more than a quarter of a million miles on that thing. <laughs> Which is why, you know, presumably the grandma was like, oh, yeah, you can have it. She's yeah. like, been blazing this thing, this is thing done. for yeah. 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> Take it. Probably came with a like crocheted yeah. little thing. That I can't believe it made it the... down to, to yeah. LA. Yeah. But yeah, I had to get so much done. So let me ask you like, a question. When Stax is popping, because you wrote for Stax for a little while. It was like yeah. a, a good right. three years? Something like that. Okay. Yeah. And they built a team and right. had a pretty sick team. Who when, else rode for him? Sorry to ask. No. It was Cameo Wilson. Oh, man. wow. Nick, Nick Zizzo. Um, what was his name that was really good at manuals? He had a couple segments on the barracks. We should actually look day, up. Day one song. <laughs> No, it was Ben something. Oh, Ben Cadeau? No, um, Fisher. what? Fisher. Ben, ben Fisher. Fisher. Oh, ben, ben Fisher. Fisher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then we added Danny LeBron. That's and, right. That's uh, right. And Brian Lottie. Brian Lottie. That's mm. right. Wow. Brian Lottie. Yeah. Amazing. And then Stax just went away, right? Yeah. That's kind of what happened with that. Yeah. And then that's, so you didn't necessarily quit. You just, it kind of, everything just kind of stopped. Yeah. When I was still on stacks, and I was, I was starting to travel a little bit too, which helped it feel, you know, real and sure. less like, what am I doing? Um, and I went to Barcelona for like three months around the time that Ellie and I broke up. Oh, okay. And had like a year Oh, there's separated. a year break? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Which was like hard emotionally. Sure. You know, but also early 20s, like if Let's you're in if a relationship, it's hard to like commit to it if you're like, maybe mm. I need time to figure this out. Sometimes you know, it's time like a crucial off. time, especially because we kind of were together yeah. from an earlier ish age it was like a important thing to do yeah. but i was in a in a tough spot like that was hard for me so being in barcelona was helpful i stayed with danny lebron mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like w- was kind of working on my spanish his roommate was teaching me spanish and i was just obviously we've all been to barcelona you're yeah. just blown away yeah. and went to Machba all the time yeah. and you know it's magical mm-hmm. um and then i traveled a bunch through like lakai connections out there i traveled to greece with walker ryan um beautiful he was on circa i was on the kai and it somehow just turned into kind of like a him alex Mizroff and me i can't remember like what the reason was but yeah. gotta go to greece saw the parthenon you know i'm just blown away like traveling kind of seeing the world and, and being in europe it's just 
pretty so magical. easy to travel when you're out yeah. there too. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it was jump these on an easy two jet hour flights. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I got to go to Malaga, mm. oh, I've which was amazing. I've always wanted to go there. On a kind of Lakai flow trip. Okay. Like, Is Federico um, hooking you up at this point? Is it Federico? Yeah, he was He was the TM like in the beginning. Okay. And then it transitioned a couple times. But so I got to experience all that, and it was a pretty exciting time to travel Europe and, mm. you know, be away from the van. And I had my friend Brett take care of the van. For me, just oh, uh, he, parked he, it. Oh, okay. yeah. He wasn't sleeping. He would send me a photo of him like spraying it down. <laughs> no, it was outside of his house. Yeah. Burn shit on it today. Got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but during that time, I was on stacks and filming, and it was around when I got back from that trip, um, because I was there for like three months. Like it was a long trip. Around the time I got back was kind of when Michael called everyone. And it was a small board company, tough to run, and I think he had opportunities for work. Um, he ended up getting a job at Patagonia. But oh, wow. he did this cool thing for us because he could have kept it going, but he had this good team, mm -hmm. and he saw a lot of talent in all of us and told us, honestly, I feel like it's going to be hard to keep this going sure. so I want you guys to see you know if you can jump on something else because I think you guys are all talented especially us AMs yeah. him wanting like at the time he wanted to turn me pro uh -huh. pretty like how did you shortly feel after that? that yeah I, it was not like super direct that he said that okay but, but it was just it. something I kind of felt and Mark mm -hmm. Schlosser um, worked for Stacks at the time too, which is how I okay. became good friends with him, and and he later worked uh, at Girl. But um, were you but ready? it was were you ready? Did you think you wanted to turn pro at that but point? I, like, I was on a really good trajectory. Okay, you know, but to say you're ready to turn pro is is tough because it's. I just wanted to keep doing what I thought you needed to do, yeah. which is just film and get photos and and you know just keep at it. But that was really good honesty because we needed to yeah. all of us kind of had to pivot and, and figure something out so if you got on stacks like 2010 ish right and then you actually eventually got on to crooked as i am in like 2014 ish if i'm not mistaken so yeah it's kind of lining up right there with the end of stacks going right on into right. crooked so how did that transition work did you know somebody over there yeah specifically Alden, John, oh, Alden John Alden at yeah. a Tampa Am. I think we were just talking. He was always so nice and cool, yeah, like him dude. and Mickey, kind of at the time. Um, Mickey but, Reyes, yeah, yeah, Mickey as well, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, he, I think we just talked, and I told him the situation, how I wasn't getting boards, but I had a pretty solid thing with Lakai, so it was almost like that floated me. You know, similar to Element, like, that dropping felt like the only thing mm. that was becoming closer, especially, like, AM flow. Yeah. An AM setup feels like you're more solid, where a flow thing, you're kind of like... Oh, yeah. yeah I need a board limbo. sponsor. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm on this shoe company, but a board is, like, a board. Plus... You get a pro board. If you're you know? on the shoe company, which was Lakai, which is, the, at that point in time, like, a great... You know, like, yeah. that, that... Like, so solid. That stamps you. For, yeah. the, for the board mm -hmm. company to be like, oh, yeah, oh, he's right. on Lakai? Like, yeah. let's do the oh, so other board company. Huge. We're not stealing him. We're not doing anything. Like, he needs a home. Like, let's let's fuck with him. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was huge. That, like, floated me to basically getting flow for Crooked. Okay. And then kind of working hard and that elevating into turning AM. Turning AM. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to John for helping that. Happen. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. How did you find out you were turning AM? They surprise you or did... No, it wasn't a surprise. Bram just told me on a, a trip in SF. Yeah. Oh, oh, so you were already yeah. doing trips with deal, them man. and like yeah, hanging it was out? Huge, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, on the Even van? Flow for yeah. Crooked was kind of like, whoa. Yeah, that's... They're just so solid. That's better than Flow for Anything a lot, of, deluxe, a lot of brands. You know? Yeah, straight up. And the boards are so good. This is a welcome to Crooked part right here. Oh, yeah. dude. How, how do you... I, your grip tape game is insane, dude. Like, in a good way, I mean. Like, I don't... You have... You're so detailed, and how long does it take you to put a sheet of grip tape together like that? Well, this is 
a long time ago. I just I've been riding regular grip for so long. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you, I've seen you do crazy ass yeah. jobs. Yeah, just good that was a artwork. thing uh-huh. for me when I lived in the van. I painted on grip every morning, and that was around the time that I started an Instagram on. Like, it was a New Year's resolution where I was like, oh, I'll, maybe I can paint grip for kids. Because I like to paint my own grip, but I was starting to, like, go through boards fast and, mm. you know, take time cool. to paint on a grip and then break it. it okay. I just I kind of was phasing out of doing my own grip. But yeah, I was sure. always artistic and, and liked painting, and it kept me busy. When I would wake up in the hot van, like I was saying, <laughs> I had to do something. But every morning I went to a coffee shop and painted on grip and Mm. i started a separate instagram i remember that which is sibo art just specifically to kind of run it like a business but at the time it was just people would request grip and i would paint it for them got you it would be spongebob or it ended up really being kind of special and detailed requests okay my friend passed away Uh, this was a quote he used to say or this is my dog, really personal mm, stuff. Sure. So I got to connect with all these people, all ages and what have you, and do something special for them to ultimately keep or put on your wall after you skate mm, it. Because yeah. if you have a board that is customized, you tend to remember Save it. it. Totally. You know, if you had a, hold on to for something sure. special. Would you? Are you still active with that uh, account? Yeah, but it's evolved into kind of murals and canvas work mm. and, and not as much grit. But that really helped keep me kind of focused and busy. I was able to, like I said, connect with people, yeah. do meaningful stuff, and, and still just have fun doing art. And uh, it was before kind of the fad of grip art, too. Yeah. It was very yeah. rare mm-hmm. to see stuff on grip. Totally. Most people are not down, you know? Yeah, totally. But then... I would a, not be kind of a newer that. generation, I feel like, that was pretty into no, the loud like grip, you know? Sean Sheffy was one of them that would definitely paint little murals oh, yeah. and stuff on his, on his grip. There's quite a few dudes that, but it was very rare. It wasn't, like, right. all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was something I didn't didn't see that much. Yeah. But it was cool because it kept me busy. And, sure, and, sure. You know, I needed to fill my time. 100%. Had no, you know, place to lurk. So and, I had to stay busy. Yeah, and like you said, it turned into murals. You did one at the barracks. You did. Uh, you painted the Keen Ramps of yeah. uh, Airbnb type thing, oh, yeah. which is yeah. cool. That you did a, super you did cool. a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah and I'm yeah. sure more than that. But uh, you know, yeah. those are the two I know about. Right. Um, speaking of the murals, here's a couple of the. Yeah, it kind of evolved. Yeah, yeah so this sick. was the grip. A lot of these were were specific requests. Look at Big L. Okay. Oh, but they, yeah, rest and, and I got cool, sponsored man. by Board Sticks. Paint pen company, paint pen which was oh, big, yeah. and I was on mob, and they would send me the grip. And how long does one of those markers last? You paint on grip. Grip is you're painting on sandpaper. Well, board sticks <laughs> had replaceable tips, so grip mm. tape eats it, put oh. it back in, and it still has the flow. It to comes nap. with the yeah. extra tips. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, wow. they were they were a really cool company. Super okay. dope. Yeah, yeah, because those are like I mean those are those are done really well. They're like oh, yeah, they're not like just little. That's some great yeah, so here, man. back like in the feed, it's really strongly all grip. Yeah. And then it sort of evolves into different stuff, sure. diff- like murals and and canvas work. And But it was really helpful for me to have kind of that side Out, hobby. An outlet. Yeah. And it was connected to skating and also mm. art. Yeah. And, you know, opened kind of opened some doors to open your art door here yeah. were you always drawing when you That's were a kid the first or the second mural is that coffee shop this one so that was originally cacao wow. and the reason i found cacao it was open late which for me Wait a minute, is, that, was is that on uh, uh, santa monica was, boulevard i needed maybe somewhere to paint if i couldn't sleep or something mm-hmm. uh, santa monica boulevard yeah like yeah, close to the courthouse yeah 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 okay i know exactly yeah yeah, yeah so it was cacao originally and they would have AA meetings there. Okay. It was open late. That's not how I know the place, by the way. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and I became you know. pretty good friends with, with everybody there. Mm. And um, I, I was able to go and paint at night. And then, then there was a, uh, like a food truck down Santa Monica to get a burrito, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I had to have everything dialed. Sure. I needed a place that was open late. If I just wanted to go paint or do right. something, you know, so I was pretty excited when I found that, and then it transitioned into good coffee. 
oh. which is who hired me to do this. But the original, very first mural I ever painted was the, the owner of Cacao just let me paint the wall. And then he sold it, and, and they bought it and painted over my mural, but then let me do the front. Okay. And that kind of started it. That's all, like, coffee Related, related stuff. Yeah. Um, stuff if so you're getting paid in, for these so. things, aren't you? Yeah. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. Ooh, How long did that take? Cool. How long did something like that take? That one took a couple hours. Yeah. A couple okay. hours? Wow. That's pretty impressive. I was like a couple yeah, days or something. Yeah, I know. I was like, really? <laughs> I, yeah, don't stop. That's so Go sick. Go just dive in. Were you yeah. always doing it when you, when, when did you start drawing? When you were like a little kid or is it something that happened later in life? I I always was really artistic. Yeah. yeah. My mom used to do stained glass. Mm. Oh, when okay. We were kids. Yeah. And the process of stained glass is intricate. For sure. Get the, you know, totally. Get the glass, have like the map of what you're making, cut it, you know, copper foil it, place it, solder it, hang it in a window and then you see the light. So it's, it's very time consuming. Learn this you know detailed meticulous way of making it and then you look at it in a window and it's like this beautiful special thing so i i was able to be you know privy to that at a young age which was special just like working hard and seeing you know a creative piece of art come to fruition but she just encouraged me to to paint and draw i remember drawing on a bookmark when i was really young Mm -hmm. and she was my mom was like this is really beautiful we're gonna keep it i think they still have it your mom on my on the side of our fridge oh. yeah oh wow just kept it and was yeah. really like encouraging my mom's kept and all my right. artwork oh yeah yeah all of it all of it I uh, mean, i'm sure you had a bunch i, I have a lot of artwork <laughs> throughout the you know? years of school and shit. yeah, yeah, don't yeah. You, mind? yeah, yeah, yeah you keep yeah, all yeah. the artwork yeah, yeah. i mean your kids make anything i think yeah dude for but sure. so that was that was special to learn that. that and then i I heavily dove into art electives in, okay. in high school. Nice. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back to this stuff too, because I'm interested also when you turned am for crooked, yeah. right? You got on the team. There was a little flow period, right? You went up to do a couple tours with them in San Francisco. Yeah. And, um, but at the time you got on am, you were like 25 years old. Yeah. Still living in the van at this point or no? It was around the time that I, yeah, I, I was still in the van, but it okay. was around the time that I was going to be done with the van. Because the van had out car van. problems, yeah. Right. And it, I, my goal was if when I turn pro, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can move out of the van. Okay, we're still a couple of years away pro. from turning pro though. Yeah. When you turn AM, but were you thinking that? Right. So there was still another couple year years, and a half yeah. or two. Yeah. So, but I mean, like. We're getting older here, right? Skateboarding, yeah. this and that. I mean, I know a lot of people do turn am and pro at you know a later stage. But was there any thought in your head of like, oh, maybe I'm getting too old? Maybe people don't want to sponsor a dude that's you know, 25 years old or something like that. Yeah, those I, those thoughts definitely crept in. But like you know, some of the the questions earlier that were similar, mm-hmm. I just had that other component of me that was so resilient sure and and confident kind of that i could Mm -hmm. make it happen you were here in the episode it was a lot of ups and downs like it was i had to really i'm sure not give up yeah i just think a lot of people like i mean i turned pro at a later age you know yeah and um well how old were you 47 yeah (laughs) yeah so i haven't turned pro yet basically (laughs) No, but I, I don't remember the there. age You'll that I there. turned pro. Don't give up. I'd have to like go back and de- <laughs> thank you don't for that. Give thank up, you. Dude. I'm actually gonna start some grip tape art pretty soon <laughs> to get me through. Um, I don't band. remember the. I'd have to kind of deep dive into when that mid-20s? was. Mid twenties. early twenties. Yeah, maybe mid. Yeah, maybe early twenties. Something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Which was late. Late. Like yep. right. Especially back then, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at least you didn't have that. I mean, a little bit, but maybe. But you had a you had a, yeah. a, a, a you had a direct path. You were like, I'm, right. I'm doing this. Well, and especially with the the connections, the sponsors, the output of video parts and photos, it, it felt like you know not like the element dropping me feeling of right being gutted. It was like I'm moving in the right direction, so I got to keep with it. But I'm sure and I felt healthier, smarter, you know, and 
was just not going to give only, up. It was but, only a matter of time. Yeah, yeah, but definitely a long journey. For sure. And pro at 27. 27. But I'm yeah. sure right when, I'm sure when the crooked thing happened, that was like... That was huge. Huge. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That'd be crazy because you're like, A, you probably love his skating, but also his art and you being an artist. That must be a wild connection to get involved with that crew. Mark Gonzalez. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah pretty just cool. has the biggest. Fan. I mean, Mark yeah. Gonzalez yeah. is yeah. doing huge. your artwork now. What soon to be your boards, yeah. graphics, and stuff. Yeah, no. He, crazy. Gons does all. Every pro model I have, and I <laughs> trip every time. So, yeah. uh, do you ever yeah, do art with him? Feeling. No, I haven't. I only catch him little windows like in New York and we just skate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that must be cool too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, you can consider that art. All yeah, day. definitely. Yeah. He, All day. Yeah. yeah. On Go Skate Day, he came up kind of like trying not to see a lot of people um, just because he wanted, I think, to skate and not, you know, maybe everyone's obviously yeah, yeah, a like, fan, but yeah. he, he just came up and he's like, how many people are you with? And I was like, my one friend, Pat. And he's like, okay, let's go try this rail slide. Has a trick, idea, everything like in mind. He's like a little kid yeah. when he skates. Always so excited. Uh, always has a trick in mind. That's you know, awesome. Could be that. impossible. Legend. But he's got that idea. Or it could be totally possible and he does it. So he battled this board side forever and like broke his rails. I have a photo of his rails like completely like warped. And one of them like disconnected because he was uh board sliding like a barrier okay in new york Sick. yeah but you just get like i would get glimpses of him and and it would be super inspiring Love because it just you feel like a kid again yeah, yeah man. like that excitement you know so rare. i mean yeah. all these all the stuff you went through to finally like make it on crooked and then i mean just to then turn pro must have been like yeah. just a big like yeah unreal unreal right yeah how did that happen what did they do it was it was a total surprise because bram told me that Ga that gons wanted to go bowling which <laughs> is not <laughs> too far off oh, weird sure, yeah Let, it could be anything to go bowling, yeah. Right? yeah it's just like that makes sense you know <laughs> and what? um and so i had no idea um and it was bolero you know close close to here and I showed up and I had no clue. They were playing my video on the screen at the end of the lane and I was just not even noticing, saying hi to people, <laughs> just had no idea. And then they finally pulled my board out and dumped pitchers of beer on my head. In Bowler? <laughs> I think in that was Dan Hobel's idea. Yeah. He was Bowler. definitely one of the people dumping I have a, there's a photo where the beer is like just about to fully oh, no cover way. me but it <laughs> oh, was wow. so surreal I, it's like a dream you know and everybody was there and yeah had no idea I was floored was there no, no not even talks about it no I, I had no idea yeah yeah no nobody had said anything you're just me. like guns wants to go bowling okay yeah I wonder what he rolls that man. makes total sense yeah wow He's got the Rip City hat on there. What an awesome yeah, thing. The, and to first. do it, too, in in kind of the, your zone over yeah. here. This is right on Venice Boulevard. Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. That's awesome, man. That's super cool. Just, so, you know, rolling up, you kind of are have, like, awkward high fives and whatever. You know, it's just like that. Especially, I'm, you know, pretty shy. Had no clue. <laughs> You're like, Isn't it weird? Like they're money? filming all this. Why are they filming us bowl? Right. Yeah. yeah. But they were really low key about it. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, like when the teams together, oh, people go. have like, the damn. camera out. Oh, it's Gons too. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> Does Gons drink beer? I don't think so. Yeah. I never thought about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does Gons drink beer? <laughs> I've never thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never thought about that picture of him doing that. Hey, yeah, regardless, yeah. he could dump pee beer on his on his head. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. for damn sure. Well, congrats on that, man. That Say was that. Yeah, what thanks. a journey. You know what I mean? Yeah. To finally reach that point and be like, Yeah, fuck, I did it, man. Yeah, like, I still I something. still trip out. I feel so grateful just to have my name on a crooked board. Yeah, that's is right. that when you got out of the van then? Yeah, like as soon as that happened. Well, pretty much. I kept it. It was so special to me. Yeah. You know, it was like a, pretty much the reason I was able to turn pro. That van was, was there. It was a huge yeah. 
help. And, uh, but it, you know, it had a bunch of car issues and whatnot. And, and so ultimately we ended up donating it at some point, yeah. which was a sad day, but just something you had to do. Cause you, you also can't store it. it and, right. and, um, sure and then we got our apartment in Venice. Yeah, it had its purpose for the time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. A long paid, time. And you too. pay it forward to the next person. Yeah. Probably needs yeah. like smog checks and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. It's like, Oh my God. When did yeah. you get rid of it? They probably got it and they were like. This donation is not awesome. <laughs> yeah. When did you get rid of it? Um, it was probably like 2018. We kept oh, it around wow. for a little bit, but it just had so many car problems. Yeah, so this was Roger did this for Skateboarder, Skateboarder. Magazine, and the music's kind of like exciting rock mm-hmm. and roll, and I just love how... He filmed it, and one of our first outings together, like filming a segment, kind of. I was on Altamont, Lakai, oh. and maybe Element at this time. Hmm. But Pretty really rad. fun to film, and and just kind of the first documentation of the van. Gotcha. Okay. You know, it was kind of early stage, and and Roger's like, let's film a little thing. See, so Walker lives in a van. Well, it's funny how he smashed I smashed mean, around the boardwalk. You became like synonymous with living in a van like that almost became like your identity it was right. like Sibo lives second. in a van walker type right. at, you know what i mean but i love that because i mean muska did his thing down here in venice chat uh jamie thomas in embarcadero like some of the best pro skaters in the world are like known for that early struggle that early yeah. struggle man mm-hmm. and like dedicated yeah not many people will do that out too you know, like Muska and the, and the boom box. It's so iconic. Yeah, for sure. Just to be the only one. Did that ever... Damn. Not just... Did that ever get on your nerves? Just the whole van thing and people hyper-focused No, on I thought it was funny. Okay. Just because for me it was a safe place to sleep. But ironically, it, it made me an exciting person to talk to <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like... I love it. Oh, I you love you want to feel me like in my van? It's kind of a weird sketchy thing that is just so i can mm. sleep safely but few people you guys are now, eating though, it up it's no, like, so normal now right yeah like manny santiago but got that a was mm-hmm. that was chris haslam has a van significantly before for sure any kind of any van other. life fad the, you know and, and there's they, our, they is, don't, and they don't have a uh, chrysler town and country either. no they that don't is they something don't. else right yeah there's are fully like kind of kitted out kitted out yeah i think i think Manny's more so than anybody's I've seen. Yeah. And then Chris. But like, yeah, I mean, they have them. Yeah. And there. sprinters and, you For know, sure. in Oregon, totally. we see tons of them because people take them camping and, mm, and have right. the whole set up. Okay. okay. You also, living in that van, created such a, a strong bond with Stoner Park, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, you you were there almost every single day. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I went today and just nostalgia crazy through the roof, just the feel of it the look of the street because i really did stay in that neighborhood it was safe right. i almost knew people like i had a couple neighbors that knew that <laughs> i slept in there <laughs> and they were like totally fine with it kind of keep an eye out okay. let us know if you see something i mean i was like a part of the community right i knew buddy right. yeah but did anyone trip on you like did any of the neighbors trip like hey there's no. a dude sleeping here all the time no no i don't nobody this guy's really all his noticed. laundry up on, <laughs> on the fence of Stoner Park. What's going on? Nobody really noticed just because you were low I key. was low key. Yeah, I was about to say low key. Yeah. I would you're, jump you're in the front of people's seat spaces, I'm sure. and jump in the back and put the curtains up, you know, at 10 o'clock at night after mm-hmm. the gym. And then in the morning, take the curtains down and, and jump out. I, w- I never was. He'd open the noise. back up, put his grill out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if, People if, if you were that dude? Yeah. It, for yeah. Sure. I was not loud. It was really subtle. Throwing his trash out focused. and shit. Like, yeah, yeah. you can create yeah. a problem, but you for know, sure. you, you seem yeah, very yeah. respectful in that way. Like, why are you going to make a, you know, a scene in that sense and make, you know, more of a a standout thing? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. What yeah. Do, where would your boxes get sent to? I had them sent to friends' houses. Oh, okay. Was that yeah, annoying like, to deal with at all? No, I don't think so. Well, for I your friends, I would have been like, I'm, st- I'm <laughs> staying, I'm staying, out, I'm, I'm staying outside of this building. I'm gonna just send it, and then I'll just who, run who and grab it when the UPS man. Who comes. doesn't want to get a deluxe box? Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, w- I think I had him sent to Ben Fordham 
who did Rossi of Sele. Okay. His oh, company. yeah. We, we filmed a lot together, and he lived up the street, and, and we would kick it a lot. And there was a couple Gracia Sele, like, kind of video parts or video segments. But I connected with whoever I could that was a skater or creator, documentator, you know, what what have you. Some Gracia Sele for you. connection. <clears throat> what was that? It was a clothing company, right? Gracias, LA. Yeah. Okay. There's the yeah. van. There it is. It's like, is that? What is that? What kind of van is it again? It's a Chrysler Town and Country. Town and Country. Yeah. Look at that. I want to talk to you. I. I mean, we're watching your skate videos right now, and I wanted to definitely touch on the Nolly Flip no uh, Nolly Flip mm. manual down Staples Center oh, hubba. Yeah. What was going on right there? Because a lot of people, and we'll, we'll try to pull it up right now, but it seemed like right. security was right on your ass. Like it was just like you, it was do or die situation. Yeah. Land or slam. Well, we had been back there a few times because I needed it for my ender. This is an escape rat. thing that I'm filming. Yeah. Skate rats, uh, yeah. pump on this part. Yeah. Of course, the last thing you have to film is your last trick, the scariest thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we would pull up and you look at Staples, it is scary looking. When yep. you when you drive up and you're not warm, like as we are right now, <laughs> yeah, you pull yeah, up yeah. to Staples and you're like, I want to jump down it. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, I'm not gonna lie, pretty scary. And we'd been once or twice. I had tried it, maybe twice. I think the first time it was pretty short because when you just when you're dropping in on it from your tail, you get cooking. Sure, it's fast and it's narrow enough to be pretty sketchy. But so the interesting thing is days prior to this, I remember thinking Gons always skates really unique, crazy boards. Okay. Big, the ladybug and the, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And he loves it. I think because it's challenging for him. And, you know, certain tricks are different. And it's like heavy. and Sure. I was thinking about that and how I always ride the same size. So I put on a Dandra Hobel. I think nine and a half. Wait a minute. To go do this trick, you switched up your... Not to do this trick. Okay. In, in the intent just in general. was not to do this trick. Okay. But I set it up because I just thought, oh, I want to try a different setup. I never do that. I always ride mm. 825 or 81 at the time I'd like gone back and forth. But you know, you get stuck in your ways. You like, totally. the, way yeah. that you like the way you like it. But Gons, that was inspiring to me because I think different tricks work differently. And skating is just can be more fun if you loosen up and try new things, right? So I set that up, and when I got there, I felt more comfortable on it. And so that's a nine. That's I a nine inch. I wrote eight one, and that's a nine and a half inch. Nine and a half. Wow. wow. Look at it. It's sturdy. I mean. It's I a guess kind of a cruiser shape, too. I wouldn't even have been able to pop that thing. I know. You definitely were having, this is slow right now but uh, and there was of great. course like slightly put like post the wrecking ball phase yeah there was a couple people trying to call me out okay but it's like we can't have any bs like it can be so psychoanalyzed there was no touch i wouldn't have i had <laughs> i did one right oh, before this touching Bro. people said that yeah. but it's the shadow on it there it's yeah. so like not even close the shadow yeah, of it could look yeah. like it. Big it was shadow. not even close. And mind you, that thing is so steep that manualing down it, you have less, yeah, way less right. of a possibility. So I was like, you guys can't be. <laughs> like, this cannot be like tainted. Dude, how this is the craziest trick I've ever done. Yeah. I could have you like ding dongs. How funny I was that? Touched, you know what I mean? When Wecking Ball came out, everyone was like, yo, did I touch? Yeah. Like everyone was tripping off their boat. Their toes. I, I like the fact that everybody's kept yeah, on yeah. their toes. What I thought was stupid was like, the the army behind him, you know, yeah. and you're just like, dude, yeah, relax, that's... bro. Like this is. If he was doing it real time, that's one thing. But if you're digging in the crates trying to look at and like shit on people, oh, doing he was shitting back on like day, day one. It's like, bro, like, we're, we're already we're already past that, bro. You you trying to spotlight something? Like, come on, stop. And where is he at to the, these days? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of the most amazing feelings. I bet. Just because even just doing a trick into it, like Chad Fernandez had done tricks into oh, yeah. it. 
and oh, I dude. saw that and and was like, oh, that's so. But no sick. one had no one manual did. No, no, yeah. no. It's Definitely narrow different. and steep, and the big board felt sort of sturdy because I ride really loose trucks, and it was a a, a different complete okay. the Dandra Hobo board, like newer Indies, so it just was a little <laughs> bit like tighter trucks. That's so weird. And a sturdy deck. I would have never thought. But I, I kind of was nolly flipping on it. It has like a little bit of a shovel and a little, you know, like a little bit of a shovel nose and tail. Okay. But it just worked. It worked. Which It'll is work, yeah. one of those things behind a trick where you're like, I ride 8-1. I did a nine and a half inch board to do that is the, like probably the craziest trick I've ever done. And I don't want to. <laughs> did you ever skate it again or did you ever skate that board again? No, I saved it. Okay, oh, but, saved it? But, the shape, but the shape never again. No, I haven't. Oh, okay. I tried Ronnie's, but I didn't skate that one again. Yeah. I, I pretty much went back to the kind of usual mm. shape that I skate. I don't yeah. want to overlook this either because it, your last three tricks in this video, this, this trick is insane. Oh, Let thanks. me look at this real, real quick. Oh, yeah. Switch to blah, 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 boom, boom. This one is crazy in downtown. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was... Like th that, I'm like, okay. And then this one, the switch flip out <laughs> crazy yeah, bro and then this you know the staple center but yeah security i tried for a while security just randomly hour and a half i feel like in wow. came that and, was an and hour I, and a half in it was a while i had it was tough to put the manual in because i kept <laughs> thinking if i don't if i fall forward whatever i had done one right before that where i tapped barely and was so devastated, you know, when you just really wanted it to yeah, be it and you want to be done. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of BMXers were down the street and they like cheered for me. So I was almost like, dang, was that it? Mm -hmm. Like I, I wanted okay. to believe yeah. that it was the one so bad, but it wasn't. And Skate Rat, he's not messing around. He was right. like, you got to do it again. And mm -hmm. so when I went up there, security just happened to come up, but I'm on a pedestal. They can't really yeah. mess me up. I'm trying to grab and you. I just did it right there. That little bit of a push. Sometimes it's all you need. Distraction. Yeah. Cops, uh, the, yeah. just cops are coming. Boom, you do it. It was such a good feeling. Were they wow. were they cool? Were they being idiot assholes? After I should say. No, I was like. They were just like out. last try. Like, come on, kid. Yeah. Like, get out of here. I was kind of not focused okay. on them. I was thinking about the trick. I was right. just like, all right, a couple more tries. One of them was was a little more aggressive. Yeah, I was like three okay. of them. Or maybe was he trying to grab your food or something. Well, the dude on the left missed the trick completely. He didn't even he didn't even watch. Hey. He didn't even know what he missed. Disrespect. Look at that. He just turned <laughs> around. He said, "You know what? I ain't watching this." I don't want to see. And this. you're trying to kick me out, and I do the trick right yeah. there. It's like, at least give me a yeah. Start clapping yeah. or something. Yeah, at least he's stoked. He's like, I don't want. I was out of there. He might have gotten nervous. Got the you, he's like, I don't want to see no nolly flip manual down this. He's like, he don't got it. I'm never he's gonna touch. I don't think I've ever watched anyone skate it in person, but that would be scary. I've never yeah, seen sure. anybody in person either. Yeah, like it looks. It's narrow enough too. Oh, yeah, it's, to it, be scary, you know. Yeah. Like this table, maybe a little less. Narrow or not, that shit was scary, bro. Yeah. That's awesome. That's one of my man. one of my that's, big dog tricks. That's one of your uh, <laughs> that, do you the memorable see? ones. Yeah. That's good that you saved the board too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Just the fact that it was so different, That's crazy. you know, yeah. and the nose was all chipped up once I had done it, like no pop. Hmm. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It's so weird the the things that happen like during these like those little things, those little things, man. Yeah. Yeah. And crazy. skaters love to hear it. Oh, yeah. I feel like I love to hear those anecdotes, you right? know, like right? oh that you did that on that person's board. No way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah those, things. those kind of yeah. things. Yeah, random. And dude. how long did you get to attempt that? That day. Was like an hour and a half, probably. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Also, too, your tr your trucks are insanely loose, dude. Yeah. Well, what's the deal with that? I I came and I came right on your board. All I remember, <laughs> all I remember is going to exit when I was younger, and getting like bones, soft bushings. They were blue, and I took it outside, and it felt super surfy and crazy, and I loved it. Okay. And then just rode loose from ever since. It's funny because like, really, like really loose. sometimes the tech skating and manual stuff, like it helps with looser trucks. Yeah. You wouldn't think that, but it actually like helps you balance a little bit better because yeah, you have more control one. over talk it. One. 100%. Yeah. 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 I don't ride my trucks like crazy loose, but I ride them loose. Mm -hmm. Right. I saw day one at Crail Tap and I had gotten comments on my ankles before 
from random friends that were like, is your ankle all right? I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> and then they're like, it looks swollen. I'm like, for real? Okay. <laughs> Didn't know, but like have muscular ankles. And it was just like kind of like buff sneak ankles. What do you mean you got almost, buff? Yeah, yeah. You got buff ass ankles. Yeah. Right. Let's see your ankles right now. Yeah. Right now. I was like, like nervous, on the table. you know? <laughs> yeah. You got a fish eye? Yeah. No, I, I was like, that's kind of weird. Is it, is it weird? Never thought about it. But I brought that up to day one just because it was a funny thing. And he was like, same for me. He's like, it looks like I have ankle weights. I remember. I know day ankles one's ankles look. Yep, yeah, they're big. But imagine every day your ankles just like right. My ankles for are massive. hours every day. You're just like making crazy muscles. Yeah, in there. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of funny to to like connect with him on that. Like, okay, my ankles are like the rock's ankles. bicep. Man, they're huge. <laughs> that's really really <laughs> weird. That's, that's cool though. Thank Can you. we see him? Yeah, after the show. Okay. <laughs> No, but it's Sneak crazy though. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing, dude? What are you doing with your ankles? Manuals. Man. Oh shit! Come on, bro. Yeah, right. you're constantly working them. Yeah. But they want even looser. Yeah. But I just got used to it. Sure. I feel like I can't control the board if it's tight. Okay. It yeah. doesn't listen to me. For sure. If I say go that way and it doesn't, I can't deal with that board. You, you, know, that you board. think you could say that board no can't be friends? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I try to find a. It's kind of happy medium because I jump a lot. Right. So you need wheel bite yeah. and yeah. what have you. But I, I've jumped a lot of big stuff and then had friends, you know, step on my board after and be like, dude, <laughs> how in yeah, the world I don't you get doing, it. man? It's great. You see like someone like Dylan Jabe and I found out he rides like insanely tight trucks. Huh. Chris Cole. Chris Cole, yeah. Billy Marks. Yeah. But like someone as tech as Dylan Jabe and the way that he looks, you're like, you wouldn't put that. Yeah. I would put like medium loose, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I would never think that at all. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. Especially coming out of tricks and just like, you know, you want to kind of be able to glide out of a yeah. trick, you know, yeah. instead of just be like stiff and just you like, want to be able, able to turn. Swerve. It's really interesting yeah. how the, the person skating and the board and how you can kind of like team up to yeah. make it work. Because tight obviously works for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like you have, I feel like, better pop. You're a little more sturdy. But I'm so used to loose that I cannot connect with the board with tight trucks at all it feels right. crazy hmm. really crazy like i'm a beginner you know and weird? it might be similar it for is. them but it's like your body and you get accustomed to your board and how you move and you know i just find it so weird when a professional skateboarder could just feel like he just got this board for christmas and he's trying to figure out how to use it yeah. like it happens yeah it's crazy yeah. what trucks do you ride in the 149 okay but i take the washers you're still on an 8.1 yeah. Okay. So you take the washers out. Too. Yeah. Stock bushings. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do a lot of different bushings, but in the stock orange without washers is perfect. They're great. I've had a lot of truck struggles. Yeah. You know. How did you find being, that one? You just try one. Well, out? that had always been there. I just would swap out for bones, um, medium or soft. No but it was always a little struggle. I ride my front truck looser, and just would have like three days of terrible Struggle, skating you yeah. know to break them in, and it yeah. was such a bummer so i figured out that if i just take the washers off of the stock indies it's kind of perfect top and bottom. yeah i started recently leaving the bottom or i leave the top and take out the bottom okay but for a while it was both i started I to ride like a little out. tighter because right. i was trying like big tricks for the pharmacy video for land specifically mm. this one trick um that I tried like eight or nine different days for, for like a couple hours each oh, and geez. still haven't got it, but it's coming badly. Yeah. The next part. You already know. Yeah. Just try the washer switch. Just keep switching <laughs> the washers. Keep trying. I'm going to figure today. this out. Yeah. I'm going to figure it out. Speaking of like video parts and everything, you, you guys, you guys got a new video com coming out pretty soon, right? Brett Subi. Oh yeah. Little video. Yeah. Okay. Well, I jumped onto that late. That's what I was Oh, you like, did? You jumped onto that late? <laughs> well, Brett has been making it for a long time, and I've been in Portland, and, you know, just we, we moved up three years ago, and, mm -hmm. and with both kids, and just not being here, I wasn't with him or didn't get to see him okay. um, to film. So when I visited maybe four, five months ago, we filmed a couple things, or sometime in the last year, mm -hmm. we filmed a couple things. Just like maybe to be in the montage. Okay. But then we were, we've always skated together, and like he was kind of my first good friend. 
Shout out to Brett Subi. He always looked dude. out yeah, for me. Yeah, and good uh, dude, yeah, good like guy. very first friend, pretty much. And then we filmed, and skated. Um, but he's really talented, a bunch of ways, and is making a, a full VX video. Yeah. Pretty sick lineup. And right. so we filmed a couple things, and then quickly we're like, let's maybe try to do a part. So I started filming in Portland with my friend Noah, who's a really good skater, photographer, and films VX. And. I started filming like really long lines so I could just make a part quick. <laughs> <laughs> you, what are you, you, you <laughs> game in the system, man? You I cheating, don't know, bro. Well, I have yeah, two kids, right? My free time to skate. Well, five, I'm gonna film is, a five block line, man. Get my whole part done. Lines ain't no, easy, but, though. So. But I know. Multiple blocks. I know. Multiple There's a multiple block. Okay. Yeah, the line. one in the okay. last video, you have a, you go down Portland. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, can you pull that one up? Do you That's, remember that watching uh, that one, Chris? Where, which one was that on? Pump, pump, pump on this. It's or? my Ender in uh, Land. Land, okay. La yeah, Dude. Kyle's Pharmacy skate shop video by Michael McLeod. Long time coming. I would visit Portland, and we would film with Kurt Hayashi, rest in peace. And it was Jake Gascoigne and I making a shop video. Okay. Maybe a short thing. Maybe a two part. Kind of evolved. Um, and then, like, the younger crew, Emil, Enzo, Anthony, Powell, these kind of really dope younger Portland skaters started to film. So it evolved into a full length. And then we filmed kind of all through COVID, which was a super unique time for Portland. Sure, we could I'm skate sure. everything. It was a ghost town. And looking back, none of that you'll ever probably skate again, a lot of those spots. Right. It was just stuff downtown that was unlocked. So it kind of depicts Portland in a cool way, especially mm -hmm. downtown, because it was very dead. Okay. But um, but that came out in, I guess, about eight months ago on Thrasher. So that yeah. was like this your year. last yeah. part that you yeah. had, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, and okay. I'm, I'm super proud of it. Like, w worked really hard on it. And a lot of it was, like, in the stage of, like, my son Louis's first year and, like, first kid newborn mm -hmm. you know like yeah, you're learning a yeah. lot and, and but also is difficult and you're you know maybe losing sleep we're, here, we're trying to find it jc's we're, we're we're it's the last it's the last thing in your part right yeah it's my last my last trick but it's not a trick yeah oh this yeah it's a, this one wait it's right after this okay so we got it this is oh yeah i do blocks. remember it's I kind remember. of a, yeah, yeah, yeah. like an iconic portland set but Initially, the, the idea was just to connect park blocks and the manual pad at directors. Mm. And that seemed kind of crazy. So there's Initially, it was like, whoa, that would be so sick. Nobody would think yeah. of going from the... Everybody just skates the stair. <laughs> but going from the stair to the manual pad. And then I just started putting the pieces of the puzzle together uh, and found okay. out... How long did this one take? Away. This was the day that my parents came over to watch Louie and I was walking down the stairs and I was like, I could do anything today. <laughs> I, had to, I had a feeling. Yeah. I could try a scary That's big so rail, I think, and I could do it. So it's this <laughs> vision of okay. success, which is just kind of funny. I don't know what it was. I felt good. Hmm. And uh, I mean, yeah, the only trick that I had to learn was this. I didn't know how to wally nolly. Oh. I needed to do it for this for this and you would think I mean, you see people do it so easy you did it, you did I just so would easy. run into the wall and, you learned uh, it that day no no okay. I learned it stay. prior <laughs> no I would go I would go by myself at night and I would try different parts of this line different oh. like I would do the big spin and the wally nolly and then I would do other parts of it I'd already done this part mm. but a little bit sketchy oh god a front pop down some stairs <laughs> yeah. is the most unreliable weird <laughs> trick ever yeah. and then to yeah there you that. go, boom, land. Hell yeah. yeah. So that wow. was, you know, a full-length shop video. It's just special to be a part of. And it was that. dedicated to Kurt because Kurt, Kurt passed in 2020 and his camera was given to McLeod and he filmed the whole video on it. It's oh. kind of this oh, wow. special thing. I love that. And, uh, you know, we all we all knew Kurt and, and mm. loved Kurt and, and so it was kind of to honor him. Yeah. Do you ever see Matt Beach around? I haven't seen Beach in a long time. The last Ooh. time I saw him, he was at the Red Wall Ride, but that was really long time ago. Huh. I'm sure you would recognize it if you saw like the footage, but yeah. he's kind of a recluse. What about Silas? 
Yeah, I see Silas around. Yeah. Yeah. Did you still have that skate park? No. No. The grotto? The grotto. Yeah. Yeah. No, he doesn't. The grotto. There's some mm-hmm. epic, dude, epic Portland skaters. Mikey Chin, he's from there? I know. Yeah. His Burnside stuff. <laughs> What's up with Burnside? Do you ever go there? You I skate there all the time. Yeah. That's gnarly. That place is gnarly. That place is I've, definitely I've, I post quite a bit yeah, of yeah. stuff in there. And my part has a lot of Burnside stuff. There's like a section. What are the locals like there? They're really cool. Yeah, it's yeah. It's definitely different yeah. than I think it used to be a little bit sure. scarier. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, I, I went a couple of times and was just like, didn't move, you know? <laughs> kind of smelt like pee. Everyone looked scary. Just deer and in the just, headlights. Just, and not only... The environment felt a little sketch. The park is gnarly. Mm-hmm. Just the uniqueness of it. And I would never be able to keep up speed. Just get lost in the middle. Look like a kook pushing. Yeah, you need to know. <laughs> and then I watch Willis and right. these other rippers like fly. I'm like, how do you do it? Mm. I asked him what his setup was. Like his setup is the Matters, secret. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <I'm not> bearings. <laughs> how do you go so Everything. fast? Yeah. But I figured it out. I went on a lot of rainy days, and I can kind of flow there. Okay. And I have a lot of fun. Super, super fun. I'm just looking forward to this new video because it's also it's Brett Subi, you, TJ Rogers has a part, mm. Mike York, yes. JJ Reiser. I mean, like, there's a good like this is gonna be a good video. Okay, yeah. And it's all that. done by Brett, like. It's going to be dope, dude. Petty Crime. Petty Crime. Yeah, that's that's the name. That's yeah. the name, dude. Is that yeah. what you're doing down here, filming for that? Or just on a No, so this trip, I had a really big painting to do for a sweet lady nice. named Kate. Okay. Yeah, she wanted a painting that is five by four foot, and to ship it, super expensive, could get damaged. And, um, and so it was just easier to fly down and paint it mm. and then i was able to do this awesome see some old friends a couple other things cool. Cool. how but long did the painting take you i painted it i started maybe at seven or eight o'clock at night and then painted pretty late 11 or 12 and then touched it up the next day oh or two okay yesterday or the day before two days ago. two days ago okay. as soon as i flew in um saturday morning i taught a skate lesson Right when I flew in. How are you getting gigs down here? What do you mean? Skate lesson. Um, Ashley and Keeley, shout out to them. They're just, they haven't actually skated too much since I skated with them last, but they're my wife's friends. Uh, Or through, in the same like friend group. Gotcha, gotcha, And I just, when I got the flight, I was like, hey, do you guys want to skate? Because we used to do like mornings in Venice. And they were like, we haven't skated in a while, but you know, we're down. I thought you were lining up gigs and stuff. (laughs) You're like, coming down, skate lessons with Sibo. Well, for me with, with both kids and like just the second kid first year it's so much full on just being trying to be a good parent and the ups and downs and you know the two stage for louis he's learning that he doesn't always get what he wants he's like fighting bedtime so much personality but a lot of the stuff is tough to parent like tantrums or um, you know just whatever it may be the terrible twos they say but it's just like learning it's a it's lot terrible of terrible threes they give but, you a little spice I know, of, of, of harder, twos yeah. but it goes into the threes <laughs> <laughs> right some so continues like, into yeah, the 18s you know, and 20s yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. all the, the the parents know but, terrible 20s man but it is it's a lot of work and and so for me my perspective mm. i think when you become a parent your free time you just think about it differently like i can't sit around yeah, yeah. Sure. and Time becomes more valuable. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, I'm going to Venice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be so free. I'm going to try to fill it with some stuff, especially if it's, you know, lucrative and in big or small ways. Totally. Yeah. I love it, bro. Definitely. I love it. I love your journey. I love the video (laughs) parts. I love that you're on Crooked. I love that you turned pro for them. I love, you know what I mean? Like seeing you. I mean, I've known you for a long time and seeing the, the evolution just... We're, we're not like friends. We don't go to the bowling alley together. But I, but uh, you know, I kind of a insider outsider looking into like your path and career. Like it's rad, man. Yeah, like thanks. you really carved out a, a a piece for yourself in here. I love yeah, that. Bro. Yeah, thanks. I was excited to come on because um, we had set up a couple times. Mm. I wanted to come on, and I just I felt kind of in the negative headspace. And Timing's I didn't want to everything. Come on yeah, if yeah. I was not in that right mindset time you know, is like everything life bro. transition kind of so i was excited that that kelly helped 
line this up. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. What we do here, bro. We got to, yeah, I mean, coming on at the right time, mentally, everything, it works out. Yeah. It's it's a must, you know? And I understand, like, there's a lot of stuff going on in life, man. We always can't always be 100% on point. Right. Totally. I am always 100% on point, just to <laughs> let you know. Say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always. that's true. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, congrats on everything, dude. Congrats yeah, on being a parent. Can. Congrats on uh, the new video part coming out. Can't wait to see that. Yeah, you know? thanks. Yeah, dude. Do um, you got room in your suitcase? Can we give you some Nine Club stuff? A couple yes, Yeti please. things? We yeah. Can yeah. Orders, bro. We've got Perfect. There we go. We've got a couple Nine Club uh, Yeti little uh Let me guess. Did you just here? bring a backpack? I did, yeah. Just a backpack. Well, now also with kids, you realize you got to have so much stuff. Oh, yeah. So I always packed light, but now if it's just me, I'm just... One pair of pants. That's, one pair yeah, of shoes. that's I'm all. Like, don't need anything. Listen, you know if you could, you know. But <laughs> if you're here for two days, that's, you're chilling. You're good. Yeah, yeah, but he yeah. already knows the landscape. He knows he can he can do his laundry, hang it up at Stoner Park. He knows he can <laughs> go go take a shower at ba- sure. Bally's. You know, <laughs> he's it's like, bad. I got this LA thing down. <laughs> you know, anybody need some help with some tips? No, it's awesome, man. Uh, oh, this is cool. This will be really helpful. Bro, hold on. First of all, Sebo. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, bro. Yeah, you are the man. And I'll, uh, as I tell every guest that comes in here and friend, you're welcome back anytime, dude. Please. Thanks. The door is always open. If you got other stuff going on, we'd love to hear and talk yeah. to you about it. Uh, Yeti, stay hydrated out there. This is the, That's I think good. this is 26 ounces. Mm-hmm. Fill it up with nice, cool, refreshing That's water. So awesome. On your skate journeys out there. I really need one. Thank you. Hopefully this won't break in the bag, but we got the Nine Club mug here. We, we'll wrap it up I'll for you. I'll wrap it up yeah. in a sweatshirt. And of course, the Yeti thermos. I think this is 20 ounces. Put your coffee in here. I put see. your tea in here. Yeah. I bring this thing everywhere. I got like 20 of them. Mm-hmm. Love this thing. Never leave home without it. Coffee. Coffee. Thank you, guys. Love it. Shout out to the Nine Club for doing this. Hey, shout out to you, I, dude. I know for a fact you. there's just so many skaters and creatives alike that just really love and enjoy this. Mm-hmm.